evening, councillors, members of the gallery and those watching at home. I declare our meeting of council open at 6.01pm. As a sign of respect to the traditional owners, I'd like to start today's proceedings by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the lands of elders past and present on which we celebrate today and other Aboriginal people who may be present today. I'd also like to express my gratitude that we share this land today and my sorrow for that cost of that sharing and would like to hope that in the spirit of reconciliation we can move forward to a place of justice, healing and partnership as we walk gently on this land. Councillors, we have no requests for leave of absence or remote attendance tonight. So we're up to item um, number three, confirmation of minutes. May I have a mover and a seconder for the minutes of the ordinary council meeting of the 27th of February 2024, please. Councillor Robins, Councillor Bingham. Item number four, councillors in accordance with our code of meeting practice page. Oh, sorry. Um, all those in favour? Unanimous. Thank you. Councillors, in accordance with our code of meeting practice, page two of the agenda reminds us of our oaths and affirmations of office made under section 233A of the Local Government Act 1993. In accordance with clause 4.25 and 4.26 of the Code of Conduct, returns made by councils designated persons must be tabled at councils meetings. Tabled tonight, we have three first returns from designated persons. Now, councillors, if you have any declarations of interest that you wish to make, please do so now. <coughs> Councillor Robins. Um, thank you. I just feel a bit awkward. <laughs> um, uh, item 12.1, I wish to declare a non-significant, non-pecuniary interest in item 12.1, a response to notice of motion, local, village and neighbourhood place plan framework, um, which does not require further action as I'm related to a committee member of the Eleanor Heights Christmas Markets Committee. And as no further action is required, I will stay for discussion and voting on this matter. Okay, thank you. Councillor Glanville. Thank you. In relation to item 10.1 relating to the gambling harm minimisation Policy, I disclose a non-significant, non-pecuniary interest that I consulted with the Wesley Mission as part of my research on gambling harm, um, and the Wesley Mission are advocates at, um, on this policy issue. I also secondly disclose that I'm a member of a registered club that has electronic gaming machines. I'm an ordinary member and have no role otherwise in the organisation. Thank you very much. Anyone else? No? Thank you very much. Okay, so we're now up to public item five, public forum and public address. <coughs> we have 10 speakers tonight. Two speakers have opted to have their address read by a member of staff. Um, and those statements will be read out by Leslie Milbourne. And before we commence, I'd also like to remind speakers that this meeting is being broadcast over the internet. Speakers must agree to the following before being permitted to address council. You must not disrupt the conduct of the meeting and treat people with respect and courtesy. You will not denigrate or make defamatory or personal attacks on councillors or staff, and that council accepts no responsibility for comments made by you speaking at public forum or public address that could lead to a claim of defamation by any person either in the public gallery viewing the meeting via the internet or through any other medium. Okay, so up to public forum, we have topic number one, Martin Cullen on environmentalism. Oh. 
Thank you, Martin. Thanks, everyone. So, uh, oh, just to let you know, too, there'll be a, a clock counting you down for three minutes and you'll hear an, a, a bell or an alarm go off when you've got 30 seconds left to speak. Sounds like fun. Okay, thank you. Can everybody hear me all right? Yes. Um, I just want to thank everybody for, for being here tonight. I'm a, a long-term local. I've lived on the beaches all my life. I was, um, in 1990, as a matter of fact, I got involved with environmentalism uh, with the Manly Environment Centre. Um, some of you may recall Judy Rice's, Dr Peter MacDonald. I was involved in organising many initiatives, environmental initiatives uh, with the MEC, um, involving people like Peter Garrett, um, Ian Kiernan, the Clean, Clean Up Australia, people, uh, a guy people might remember. And so that's um, nearly 35 years ago. So maybe I've got a little bit more, maybe I might know a little bit more about um, the history of the local environment movement than, say, the average person. Maybe not, but anyway, I've just got a couple of things I'd like to say tonight. My first um, experience with the, the whole public environmental thing that, that I could find was in 1967 when um, uh, Joni Mitchell came up with that song, Pave Paradise, put up a parking lot. And I thought, that's the first example I can remember of the environment being mentioned in the mainstream. The, the other, the, the next thing that happened in the environmental movement was in 1987, when big money was introduced into it. And in 1987, there was this... Um, the discussion was kicked off, the environmental discussion was kicked off um, by the Earth Charter, which was um, written by a guy called Maurice Strong, who worked for David Rockefeller. David Rockefeller supervised the writing of the Earth Charter, and as you may well remember, um, the Earth um, the Rockefeller family have got a, the richest family in the world at that time. Um, um, John D. Rockefeller at one point was the, the richest guy in the world. And um, they're basically big oil. All right. So um, then with that, you've got the Club of Rome. And the Club of Rome with the Rockefellers kicked off the environmental conversation. The Club of Rome were Italian big oil, OK? Um, some of you people may remember Agnelli. He's, he's big time in was Formula One. Again, this is, this is a big oil initiative. OK, now, the thing you may not know about the Rockefeller family, the people that kicked off the, the, the big money environmental movement, was that during World War II, the, 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 um, the Germans could not fight the war without the Rockefeller family. Thank you, Martin. Sorry? Um, thank you, Martin. I think you'll find your three minutes has gone. Thank you. Oh, really? I was look. Oh, <laughs> really? Yes. So yep. I, I don't get to, yeah. I don't get to finish my point. Oh, it was a countdown. I thought it was a count up. Yeah. No, it's a countdown. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you very much, Martin. Oh, I can't finish my point. No, not not at the moment. No. Right. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thank everybody. you. Okay. Um, a regular is up next. Mr. Douglas Price speaking on R2 zoning for the Northern Beaches Council. Madam Mayor, Deputy Mayor, councillors and uh, staff, audience and the, the audience at home. That's something I've added extra now. I realise how important these discussions are with people listening at home, whatever time of day it may be. R2, residential two zoning on the Northern Beaches um, Council, uh, state government initiative, uh, but always been R2. Much of our um, council area is R2, uh, very suitable uh, for... Um, dual occupancies, um, backyard cabins or um, townhouses side by side. Uh, but there have, there have been issues. Last, last council we had a very good points point up by two of the Pitwater boards. I'd like to throw the 
Third one on, which is Narrabeen, Narrabeen Ward. Narrabeen Ward is cause, of course is in the Pitwater state seat, which is how the Minns government sees it. So Narrabeen has always been considered in my time to be the golden mile. It's always been, goes back to the old Beach Boys uh, song, Surfing USA, and they talked about surfing at Narrabeen. I remember as a boy surfing up in Narrabeen. It was the cultural thing that uh, Narrabeen was the North Bondi or the North Manly, and it's always been very culturally with my family living there and me also living up at uh, Pitwater in my home up there. It's been a case of Narrabeen is a very important area. We don't want to see that turn into a high rise along Ocean Street, Lagoon Street. It's got all the criteria that the, the uh, Minns <coughs> government would like from the point of view of Woolworth, Woolworths, major shops, all those type of things. It's got a beeline. It's also got the Wakehurst Parkway, maybe some improvements to the Wakehurst one day. So I'm standing here tonight saying we need to protect Narrabeen, it's our golden jewel in Pitwater. It's a great lot of sandy surf, which our population in their 20s to 30s, it doesn't seem to have changed very much, 20s to 30s, they enjoy that particular lifestyle. I did. It's uh, not really suitable for anything less than two storeys. Let's not uh, fall in the mistake of having three, four, five storeys. The greatest thing, of course, for us on the northern beaches, the cost of land. There's not much under $3 million. And for developers to make a profit, they've got to have a, a development three storeys or higher. I, um, I beat years ago the um, development at um, Seaforth TAFE, the council clever site there. I beat that and it was a case of, um, I'm happy to fight this one again to keep Narrabeen the way it is. The old saying that the beach, would, beach boys say, surfing USA, let's see, surfing USA, but let's surf the Narrabeen way. Let's keep it the way it is, councillors. We don't want to fall into errors of giving up our golden jewel in pit water, which is that golden mile of sand. We don't want to have a mini surface paradise coming here by the fact that we think, oh, no, they're not really interested in that. Where well, there is, there's the lagoon, there's the, the car park down there. This not the car park, sorry, the parking area, parking area that's used by the visitors. It's a great little area, and I thank you tonight for hearing me again, and, and uh, thank you very much. Take care, and... Talk again. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Okay, now we move on to public address um, with the first item being 7.1, a statement being read out for Sam Samuel Wilkins. Um, Leslie. Sam Wilkins writes, Good evening, Mayor, councillors and staff. I wanted to express my support for this evening's mayoral minute regarding special entertainment precincts. The Northern Beaches has been a breeding ground for some of the best known live bands in the country over the past 50 years, including Midnight Oil, In Excess, Ice House, Moving Pictures, Lime Cordial, Ocean Alley and many more. Without support for live music, acts like these would not exist. We have an opportunity to embrace our rich music heritage and revitalise this culture going into the future. These artists started out performing at local pubs that had band rooms and supported live music along the Pitwater Road and Condamine Street corridor from Manly to Palm Beach. Most of these venues have been redeveloped over the years and many were forced to close due to noise complaints and other issues. The designation of special entertainment precincts in certain areas like Brookvale and Manly will make it easier for existing venues to put on live music events and allow new venues to open as it will make the process easier for venues and council to manage issues such as noise restrictions. Under these controls, these issues would be managed by council in conjunction with the venues and allow benefits for venues including extended hours if they host live music. I hope the council will give good consideration to this proposal, which would benefit Manly and Brookvale particularly, with their existing live music venues. Kind regards, Sam Wilkins. <coughs> okay, thank you. Um, and while you're up there, Leslie, uh, the next one is from Mike Beresford Jones. And Mike is writing on behalf of Brookie Fest and a, um, a group of. Um, organisations. He says, Dear Northern Beaches Council, Brookie Fest Precinct represents a consortium of like-minded small independent businesses de dedicated to fostering dynamic growth in the suburb of Brookvale. Through our focus on artisanal food, in-house crafted beverages and a diverse range of entertainment options, we aim to invigorate the local community. Founding members include Seventh Day Brewery, Manly Spirits, Dad and Dave's, Bucketies, 
could Radig B Distillers, Sale Pepe Pizzeria and Freshwater Brewing. Brewing. These form the cornerstone of our initiative. Our collective vision is to transform Brookvale from a traditional nine to five suburb into a vibrant, inclusive nighttime entertainment precinct that celebrates the diversity of the Northern Beaches and Sydney at large. Our cooperative currently sustains over 110 jobs, encompassing full-time, casual, traineeship and apprenticeship positions. Over the past year, we've hosted live entertainment on more than 1,350 occasions and provided sponsorship to over 40 local businesses. Additionally, we've supported charitable causes on over 30 occasions. Our revitalisation efforts have created opportunities for other like-minded businesses to thrive, including breweries, distilleries, cafes, vintage shops and community workshops. As Brookvale experiences revitalisation and population growth, with 1,350 new homes projected in the next 15 years, we aim to play a central role in shaping the area's future trajectory. By creating an appealing destination, we seek to contribute to ongoing revitalisation efforts and attract new residents and visitors alike. Our collective project aims to activate the district by curating engaging experiences through a bespoke food and beverage trail, recurring events and fostering robust community involvement through partnerships with local charities and businesses. Our inaugural Brookie Fest held in February was a resounding success, drawing over 2,000 visitors and resulting in an average 300% increase in business revenues. The demand for such events within the Northern Beaches community is evident, as it indicated by the data we've gathered by the app we commissioned for the event. We would gladly share these insights with you. These objectives align directly with the goals of the New South Wales Government Special Entertainment Precinct status. By enhancing district coordination, supporting partnerships and boosting marketability, our efforts contribute effectively to these objectives. The State Government has enacted legislation to revitalise areas like Brookvale into the vibrant hub we envisage. By supporting this motion, you not only demonstrate the leadership expected of our council, but also alleviate the bureaucratic hurdles that hinder events like Brookie Fest. The transportation network is in place, the vision is clear, and we possess the infrastructure and expertise to bring it to fruition. We appreciate your consideration of this matter. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the next speaker up is on item 13.1. Public ex Exhibition Draft North Narrabeen Reserve Plan and Management. Bryce Ellis, speaking for. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I just want to say uh, that I really appreciate the, uh, the time and the consideration that went into the plans for Rat Park and the improvements that are taking place or going to take place. Uh, it seems like it took a lot of uh, time and effort to consider those uh, improvements. Um, however, there's one thing I'd like to address in the meantime. Um, there's a, sa a major safety issue that takes place, particularly on Friday mornings um, during the markets. Um, and it's probably going to take this place on this weekend uh, between the golf driving range and this unnamed road between the golf driving range and uh, the actual rugby grounds itself. Mm -hmm. um, it, these, this is deemed a no parking zone and there are signs throughout this area. Um, however, there are cars that are frequently going in and out uh, in that parking lot that's in the back area. And unfortunately, um, there's not really a walkway. I have my wife and my two children, age three and two months old, that we push in a pram. Um, there's no walkway in the meantime. I understand there are plans for that to be built. Um, however, this, we've, we visit the market between 30 and 40 times a year, and that's not an exaggeration. Um, this has been an ongoing issue without any resolution. There have been no rangers. There's been no enforcing of the actual no parking along this street. Um, it creates a dangerous uh, walkway, unfortunately, that we've had to, you know, kind of push the pram through what can only be described as a BMX course that's right along the driving range. Um, so unfortunately, um, you know, I just want to address this given that Friday is going to be probably one of the busiest market days of the year, um, given that it's going to be school holidays and it's a public holiday for everyone. Um, so I'd just like to uh, raise that concern for, you know, this Friday, but then Fridays going forward. So thank you. I yield my time. Thank you, Bryce. We'll take note of that too. You never know. There could be some rangers down there. <laughs> okay. Uh, next speaker is on the same topic, item 13.1. Austin Shepherd, also speaking for...
Thank you, councillors and members of the public. Um, sorry, my name is uh, Austin Shepherd. I'm actually also the president of the Northern Beaches and uh, Northern Sydney and Beaches Hockey Association, um, as well as a father of a budding hockey play budding hockey player. Uh, wanted to talk about the master plan at Rat Park, no, or colloquially known as Rat Park. So hockey is a fantastic sport. There's 5,500 participants in our local region. 70% of which are female. It's the second most popular female sport in Australia. Um, unfortunately, however, there is not one single full field pitch uh, in, on the Northern Beaches that can accommodate hockey. Now, as part of the uh, master plan, I was very pleased to see that you have field two as a synthetic pitch. This is a fantastic opportunity to put a Gen 2 turf down, which can accommodate a range of different uses, not just uh, soccer, which seems to be the predominant driver in the local area, but also all the different types, futsal, hockey, um, tennis. Now you can see that, uh, through the use, through the association that I'm part of in the hockey community, we have actually managed to put a half field at Narrabeen Sports Academy. That has totally been done by volunteers. This is a fantastic achievement, but it's not sufficient to play games. If we're able to get this field at um, the uh, Rat Park, made to accommodate multiple users, this could be a huge win for everybody. The hockey community are very active. Um, we're willing to put in effort and funds where available. Um, well, there's plenty of funds in hockey. We just need the opportunity. Um, there's a lot of different drivers that could, I could go on about for hockey and why it's a great sport. But the number one is just providing opportunity for the kids. That has been the focus for the community getting the facilities on the northern beaches and allowing our kids to have uh, the best opportunities possible. And as, a, as I said, again, it's a number two uh, most popular sport for females in Australia and not one single pitch on the northern beaches. So I'd hope that we could alleviate that in this, what could be a really fantastic master plan. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Austin. Uh, next speaker up on the Excuse same... Excuse me, madam, can I ask a question, please? Yes. Um, sorry, sir. In, in, in various conversations in the past to do with hockey, um, hockey in Northern Beaches has always been very uh, specific that they need a very specific type of uh, synthetic, mainly wet, which basically precludes any other sport for using it. From what you just said, does it mean you have now changed your requirements? There definitely is a preference for wet, but there's been a shift away from that, not only uh, uh, locally, but internationally as well. Wet has been a bit, um, whilst everyone would love a wet field, is the best to play on. You don't get as many injuries. Um, it, there's a shift to multi-purpose, and that allows uh, other users to use it as well. And the Gen 2 turf that we've put in at Narrabeen, go and have a look at it, it's fantastic. Um, we actually designed that with tennis uh, lines as well, marking, so that they can use that as well. Um, it's sand-based. Uh, it doesn't use rubber infill. It's eco. Um, and whilst you can have the reticulation of water anyway to mitigate those concerns, it doesn't use the water. Um, so it's a, it's a great option. Okay. Thank you for the question. Thank you, Thank you Austin, Austin, for answering Thank you. that. All right, our next guest speaker up is Jacob Hall on the same topic. Um, and speaking against. Uh, good evening, uh, councillors and members of public. Thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. My name is Jacob Hall and I have lived next to Rat Park with my family for the last 26 years. Mm -hmm. Our residency is near Field 2 uh, and will be impacted by the proposed development uh, I'm here to advocate for thoughtful, sustainable development that preserves the unique aspects of the area. The local residents have already seen the negative impacts um, uh, resulting from the commercialisation of the surrounding area, notably the construction of the concrete beeline commuter car park. This has led to 24-7 lighting pollution, a significant rise in antisocial behaviour, and visitors to the area commonly use residential streets for parking uh, and as a drop-off point um, when, when attending sporting activities. 
the popularity of the Friday markets uh, has dramatically increased foot traffic into the area uh, and the commercialised uh, activities, meaning that on an average week, residents um, uh, you know, are contending with a continuous uh, roster of recreational and commercial activities, starting early in the morning and typically don't end until later in the evening. Residents broadly agree with the need for additional seating in the area. If you have a map up of the um, proposed plan, um, we think that's fine. Please note that um, it would be worth considering moving some of the um, seating away from the residential homes. It's become a bit of a hot spot for, um, I guess, uh, party goers on the way on, on, this, on the way to the B line on the way on a night out uh, to use that area. That results in a lot of rubbish, a lot of riffraff. Um, uh, and it does also lead to some damage of the local facilities. Um, just looking at the proposed resurfacing of Field 2, we feel that we'll, it will diminish the size of the green space that we already have, put pressure on existing infrastructure and maintenance requirements, uh, add more events to the recreation roster, lead to a loss of character that is already valued by the area. Synthetic turf should not take place of natural grass. Natural grass is significantly cooler in the summer, provides a sound barrier, um, given that we are just on the abutment leading up to field two, uh, and is more environmentally friendly, whichever option uh, you use for the synthetic turf. Uh, some use microplastics, uh, and they do end up in the waterways. It would lead to a loss of local biodiversity. There are a lot of birds and animals that uh, live in and around the grass. Synthetic turf on this field would be less inviting for those um, looking to picnic and use it as a shared space rather than just sport. Uh, local residents fear that the addition of AstroTurf and the new car park to support it will make way for future concentrated development of the area. Uh, things such as uh, additional lighting, perimeter borders, grandstand seating and drive greater demand for scheduled sport to operate all year round. Um, thank you for your time. We're just looking at some consideration around the locals. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jacob. Okay. Uh, I, yes. Yes, question? Thank you. My question is directed to the CEO. Could the CEO please advise whether staff considered, among other things, uh, the antisocial behaviour that has been mentioned just by the speaker now, as well as previous reports that have come to council of such. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I might uh, just um, defer to Jeremy Smith. Thank you, Councillor, um, for your question. Uh, Council has considered um, crime prevention through design principles in the development of the master plan and will continue to do so through the detailed design process if uh, Council adopts the plan. Thank you. And just in relation to one of the major issues that is consistently raised at both um, Brookvale from the Oval there as well as other ovals that we have, uh, lighting pollution, what exactly will council be doing to limit lighting pollution which would adversely affect adjoining residences? Through you, Mayor Hines. Um, the only additional lighting proposed through the North, draft North Narrabeen Reserve Plan of Management is for the baseball fields situated in the northeast of the site. Uh, that sport has no lit fields in the vicinity which uh, dramatically impacts on their ability to cater for everyone who wants to play that sport. Um, lighting is installed to meet a number of standards including, but not limited to, um, um, uh, the various sports, um, the illumination required for that particular sport, um, in this case about 300 lux. Um, also, um, lights spill into neighbouring properties. It has to be no more than 10 lux at the property boundary. Generally, we achieve about one lux at the property boundary. Um, there's also standards around the protection of wildlife in the area to ensure lighting doesn't impact on any uh, habitat or um, future habitat. Okay, thank you. Uh, up to item 15.3, uh, notice of motion, ticketless parking system. Mark Horton. Just on. Pa right. Mark, yeah, pull Thank it you. down okay. close to your mouth. Okay, well, while I support Councillor 
Genscher's motion to have the decision to implement ticketless parking <coughs> fine arrangements reviewed, I personally want to return to the old system uh, of issuing tickets on the spot. And seriously, supporting arguments about the new system being more efficient, better or even possibly less costly are a furphy. Next council staff are likely to come up with a system to hand all fines, penalties and even revenue collection like rates handed over to the faceless bureaucracy which is Revenue New South Wales. Revenue New South Wales has become a large government run funds collection business. From my experience I've found that Revenue New South Wales staff do not have the discretion to waive fines as council has for those parking fines. More seriously, the fact that processing of fines and issuing notices by mail is now the norm is also a worry. Many post deliveries are reduced to three days a week, so mail delivery is less frequent. Will Council seek to allow more time for offenders to pay fines? And regardless of this, we're being denied fairness and that we will not know if we've been committed an offence until possibly weeks after the event. I'm also concerned that the non-issuing of tickets on the spot means that all those charged with a fine are assumed to be guilty. Yes, guilty, and with the less chance of proving their innocence. How many people who overstay parking fines or park in the wrong spot do it deliberately or with some intent to break the law? What does the lawyer on council say to this? Now, um, I would prefer the council vote tonight to return to the ticket parking system immediately and not delay the decision through a costly and time-consuming and time-wasting review. Um, today, I actually witnessed the no-ticket system in operation in Mount of Isle. Uh, to me, um, the latest issuing of a ticket is like purchasing, punishing a child two weeks after they did something wrong and then giving them a tablespoon of cod liver oil. Remember that as a punishment when we were children, at my age anyway. So, uh, and I may be cynical that the, the removal of the practice of issuing spots on the fine may really be all about freeing up Rangers' workload and ensuring that uh, more time to issue even more fines. I'm sure the ticketless arrangement would be considered by council management to be a more sustainable practice. The most overused word in the local government dictionary. I love sustainability. But seriously, I think we should return to the ticketless system, uh, the ticket ticketing system, because people know they've offended and they're caught on the spot and they can't do anything about it. Uh, putting in the mail is ridiculous. It's just playing another bureaucratic game. Thanks very much. OK, thank you, Mark. Am I up next? Or? Um, you certainly are up next, so don't go anywhere. Thank you. Um, we're up to item 15.5, Notice of Motion, Graffiti Task Force slash Working Group. Okay. So I'm here to speak in support of Councillor Gentsch's motion, asking Council to establish a community task force or working group to examine solutions to graffiti. I'm fed up with seeing the constant tagging of local public and private buildings and other structures. Council is doing its bit to clean up and paint over tagging on most of the places under its responsibility. But this is not a solution and it is costly. The policy of paying for murals to be painted in public places to dissuade tagging has also failed in Mona Vale. The large mural in Village Park has now been tagged a number of places. Very strategically, you don't have to go up to have find it, but it's been done because they're blending into the bright paintwork. And in 2020, I spoke to the General Forum about graffiti in Mount Vale. At that same meeting, Councillor Sprott had a minute before Council calling for action to remove the ugly tags on the glass wall over Warringah Road at the Forest Way intersection. I recall that some prominent councillors voted against the motion. It's now 2024 and that wall is now covered completely with graffiti. I've informed Council again that I will be willing to be a member of the anti-graffiti working group. Uh, this form of graffiti involving smaller tags and large colourful, what they call pieces or masterpieces, is a worldwide phenomenon. But so what? It's van it is vandalism and it's anti-social. Uh, it's not a form of protest. It's not a message of peace or ban the bomb or the old message of eternity. Modern graffiti is a game of dare for the perpetrators. It's not just young people or teenagers, but adolescents and more mature adults who are defacing our walls and structures. And they don't give a damn about social issues or poverty or overdevelopment or war. I want the working group to explore the other ways of engaging young people, especially in real art activities, 
if that is what they want. I also want to see more CCTV in public places and follow up with the police to enforce penalties. I believe we need a public education campaign in schools and in the media to explain the cost of this form of vandalism. If young people are bored, then why not offer more community-led activities like dances and concerts? I'm for the generation where we had dances in the area on all the beaches in the 60s and 70s, and it was fantastic. Not always great, there were antisocial behaviour, but the options are anyway there. If we need funding, then maybe you can bring businesses online. It's up to Council, the Northern Beach Council, to lead the way and stamp out graffiti once and for all. And you can do it. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mark. OK. Um, next person. Can't see him, but um, Patrick Daly. He's here. Oh, there you are. Item 15.8, notice a motion on e-bikes. Welcome back, Pat. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. I support motion 15.8, which relates to e-bikes. When serving on council, I fully supported the development of joint pedestrian bike paths. I also use these paths e extensively as both a pedestrian and a bike rider. In other words, I fully support active transport. However, that said, these big fat wheeled bikes, which in many cases are bigger than motor scooters, and which are often driven like motorbikes on both footpaths and roads, sometimes at speeds of 30 and 40 k an hour, and often with total disregard for the road rules, are of major concern. I stress, in many cases, the token pedals on these bikes are rarely used. Motor scooters need to be fully registered and the drivers fully licensed, not so with these motorbikes. Okay. A large percentage of these motorbike riders, oh. sometimes with one and even two passengers on the back, often travel at real speed and when approaching pedestrians make absolutely no attempt to slow down. Many people, particularly seniors and people with a disability, are now fearful when using our footpaths. I and many others who have supported the development of active transport feel totally betrayed. This is not what we had in mind. It is not active transport, far from it. The footpaths and bike paths have been built with many millions of ratepayers' dollars. On behalf of the general community, particularly our seniors, I request that Council work with our local state MPs and the state government to rectify this totally unsatisfactory situation. Everybody should be able to safely use our footpaths. Councillors, I live in Manly North. This is a real hotspot for these particular bikes. Unless we act now, somebody is going to be seriously taken out. I thank Councillor Walton and Deputy Mayor Ryburn for bringing this motion before Council. I also thank Rory for recently elevating this matter in State Parliament. Councillors, I would be negligent if I did not take this opportunity to thank staff for the work they are doing in the area of gambling harm minimisation. I thank Councillor Glanville for her work regarding this increasingly important issue. I and many others will be watching the debate regarding item 10.1 with great interest. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. Thank you, Pat. Okay, councillors, I note that there are a number of items on the business papers tonight, including several noms. And in an effort to get through the business as efficiently as possible and in time, I'm going to ask you to consider the following. Only rise to speak if you have unanswered questions or disagree with the officer's recommendation. Make your questions and comments as succinct as possible. Not necessarily repeat or make the same point as previous speakers. And remember that you should only speak once per motion on the table. The role of the chair is to ensure meetings are run efficiently, transparently and equitably. However mistakes happen. Councillors, I'm going to ask you for your patience and your understanding if I don't immediately identify you that you wish to speak to an item or if I call you to speak out of order. I undertake to always be as fair and equitable as possible and never in a political partisan manner. 
Any departure from this undertaking is un unintentional and of course I am grateful for all your support. I'm aware that at the last meeting, in my effort to get through the business on the agenda as effectively as possible, I inadvertently cut off some councillors who wish to speak. I'm hoping that you make allowances for me with occasional mishaps as we work through this agenda together. Please know I am doing my best. To improve the efficiency of tonight's meeting, I'm going to ask councillors to support the following initiatives. When it comes time to voting on items, I will um, sequentially ask you to stand and stay standing until I call your name, either in support or in opposition, in a way we know our meetings go for five, five and a half hours. Think of it as this, you, you're actually getting to stretch your backs out. I note that some of you need to stand as the night goes on anyway. And number two, in, in respect to NOMS and with the consent of the original mover of the NOM, invite NOMS to be passed by exception if there are no questions or amendments. It's up to you, councillors. I thank you and I now move to item six, items to be resolved by exception. Don't worry, we will go through it together. Okay, councillors, we will now move... Councillor Glanville. Um, are we, we're calling items out then? I'm going to be calling okay. all the items out one by one and that way we can make sure we have a mover and a seconder for both and then we'll speak to those. Okay, councillors, we now move on to items by exception. I would ask you to be mindful of whether it is absolutely necessary to call out an item if the officer's recommendation is sound. Oh, councillor Crevlin. Sorry, my apologies, Madam Mayor. I need to make a disclosure of interest. Okay. Um, a non-significant, non-pecuniary for item 8.2, please. Thank okay. you. Yep. I will, I will leave the room. Okay. Yep. Oh, the Croatian um, discretionary, discretionary funds used to fund a Croatian language school for our community. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, fabulous. Just checking with governance to make sure they've caught the information. I'll also um, be providing an opportunity for notices of motion to go by exception where councillors do not have an objection to their notices of motion being dealt with this way. If you wish to call out your nom, please do so in the usual manner when I go through the items shortly. Oh, sorry, Councillor uh, Page. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. I actually did previously bring it to Council's attention, but I'm not sure if it's got across, but I um, will be withdrawing my notice of motion, which is 15.7, uh, about parking on Beauty Drive, Well Beach. Yes, I actually have that, but that's fine. We will make sure that 15.7 is removed. Before we start, I wish to confirm Councillor Page has provided notice that she has withdrawn her notice of motion, 15.7, told you it was coming, <laughs> regarding Beatty Drive, Whale Beach. Thank you, Councillor Page. Excuse me, Mayor. Did you say that items or notices of motion are going to be adopted by exception unless they're called out? Yes. Is that a new code? Is that a new it's a, procedure? A, it's a change that we're trialling. Um, for all I know, every single notice of motion will be pulled out. Well, I can assure you they will. Okay. Because I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, firstly, may I have a mover and seconder for the motion to confirm that um, we have withdrawn the notice of motion 15.7 from BD Drive, <laughs> Councillor Page, and seconded by Councillor Ryburn. Okay. Councillors, I'll now call out every item one by one and you advise me if you'd like to call the item out. 
Item 7.1, I will. <laughs> Item 7.2, I will. <laughs> Item 8.1, Okay. Item 8.2. Yeah, we're not voting yet. So, um, okay, we're not voting on that. So when we do get to vote on it. Yeah. Um, item 9.1. It's going through by exception. Item 9.2. Outcome of public exhibition 10.1. Um, item 10.2. Safety. Uh, yes, Kristen Glanville. Item 10.2. I saw that. She's waiting for a moment. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's by exception, yes. Sorry, I, I wasn't sure whether someone put their hand up or was scratching. Um, item 11.1. .1. Councillor Causey. Item 11.2. Item 11.3. Uh, there's two of you, so just let me get item 12.1. I just have questions. Yes. Uh, are you are you moving as is? Yes. Okay. And just a quick question. Uh, we're not up to. She's saying she's not going to speak to it. She's just got questions for it. Okay. Yeah. We'll pull it out then, so that you can ask your questions. Thank you. All right, so we've got two for that one. Item 12.2. By exception. Item 12.3. By exception. Item 12.4. Well, we can note when a particular councillor's not here, though, that those were his favourites. <laughs> um, item 13.1. Okay, got both of you. Um, item 13.2, banners and promotions. Exception. Exception. Okay, now the notices of motion. 15.1. Item 15.2, urban greening. <laughs> Item 15.3. And um, Item 15.4. Yep. Uh, the yep was from. Okay. Item 15.5, 15 15.6, 15.8. <laughs> okay, and in confidential, 18.1. Miranda. 18.2. Eighteen point three. Um, just a question, mm -hmm. Madam Mayor. Yes. Seeing how uh, Councillor Reagan and um, Councillor Monaro Perez called out all the motions, does that mean that they are now moving all those motions, or it doesn't? No. Okay. Cool. Just checking. Thanks. Just checking there. Were 
Um, yes. Right? Yes. Yep. Great. So okay. I had Miranda Causey for 18.1, um, Kristen Glanville for 18.2, and Miranda Causey for 18.3. We'll need a mover yeah, we'll and seconder for the block as well. Okay, now that we're all finished, I'll ask staff to put that on the screen and we need a mover and a seconder for those that we are passing. Um, so moved by Councillor Ryburn and seconded by um, Councillor Regan. Okay, so all those in favour? Anyone? Anyone? Uh, in, no, I'm, I'm kind of can guess. Anyone against? No, it's unanimous. Thank you. Not yet. <laughs> I know. Well, every meeting we change the rules a little bit to see if everyone's paying attention. We're just after an efficient meeting, so we'll, everything is just to give it a try. Okay, so the first one up is Merrill Minute uh, 7.1 um, on the Special Entertainment Precinct. Um, this Merrill Minute is to flag... I've also noted you, Councillor Walton, so I will make sure that you have something to say. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Merrill Minute, I'm moving it. And does anyone have... I'll start with questions from the staff first before I can say something towards it. Yeah, I've got Walton and Regan. I'll, I'll start with a question, if that's all right. That's all right. Oh, do you want to go first? Yeah. Um, Vince was... Uh, sorry, Councillor DeLuca was asking a question first, so we're up to questions. Uh, thanks, Madam Mayor. In relation to the Manly Liquor Accord, could Council please advise when that was actually introduced? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. We will um, uh, come back to Council if that advice. Councillor Causey, have you got oh, a sorry, question? Sorry, I do have some more questions. Oh, okay. Thank you. In relation to uh, criminal behaviour in Manly, uh, following the Liquor Accord, I realise this will have to be taken on notice, but could Council please advise how many actual criminal offence and convictions occurred in Manly on the Corso and surrounds since the Liquor Accord was brought in? And similarly, how many uh, offences in relation to assaults and drunkenness since we've allowed um, an entertainment quasi-precinct in Brookvale have occurred? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Will we bring back a memo to that? Or have you got some advice, Mr Kerr? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, we will endeavour to find as much information as possible, however, it may not be to that granular level of detail as per suburb and the like, but yes. Thank you. Okay, and the second question, person with questions, was that Councillor Causey? Um, yes, through you, Madam Mayor. I'm just wondering, um, do we have any idea of how these... Um, the locations for these precincts will be identified. Not working? 
meant to be on. Get it closer. Okay. Um, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, the. Oh, so I've got it again. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> Fifteen years of saying it um, in prior organisations. Um, through you, Mayor. Um, the reason why we are, you know, we, we think it's a good idea for council to participate in the expression of interest is to learn more information. Um, these legislative provisions are new. Inner West Council have participated in a trial and we need to understand more. Um, the only information we have available is what's available on the website and there is not a lot um, available. So we believe that it wouldn't apply to individual standalone premises, that there would need to be a, um, a, a accumulation or um, of businesses in a defined geographic precinct for it to meet the definition of what is a special entertainment precinct. And we're taking our cues from the Inner West example of Enmore Road. Okay, does anyone else have any questions before I then move yes. into Councillor yes, Walton? Madam Sorry, I didn't realise um, you were a question. No, no, that's okay. Just, um, and, it, and it's building off uh, uh, the previous question. Um, I know that the, the relevant department, New South Wales Government Department, have contacted the councils. Have we indicated uh, any particular lo locations or, or suburbs uh, to that department? Um, through you, Mayor, um, my understanding, we do have a staff officer who's been participating in a working group um, with the Late Night Economy Commissioner, um, as are a number of other councils, but I don't believe that we've specifically expressed a particular precinct or area that may be suitable at this particular point in time. That would be a matter for the council to determine. Thank you. I have a question. It's a question. Councillor Sprott? Yeah. Um, just in, in the background here, it says that um, it's an extension f of two hours, um, two hours or one hour. It, it, so we're, are we talking a 24-hour licence or is it just an extension of, of two hours or one hour? My understanding is an extension of two hours or one hour of, from existing consent conditions. Um, however, from my understanding too, and I could be incorrect, so please um, uh, jump in, Louise, if I've get, got this wrong, but it does give council the flexibility to, instead of the business going through a whole heap of paperwork, that the flexibility is there if, count, if um, businesses want to um, have extended hours for certain, air, for certain times and not for others. So just to be clear, it's not a 24-hour licence? No. No. Okay. No, that Thank was you. never the intention. Thank you. Councillor Regan, is it a question or a...? Yep. Yes, just a question um, through you, Mayor, to Miss Kerr. Kerr. Just clarifying that this, we're, all we're doing tonight, or all this motion seeks to do tonight, is just to flag our interest. Um, we note we've got it uh, with the economy, so it doesn't... We're not saying we're signing off on a period. We're just saying we're flagging interest in doing this and being part of a trial potentially. Though the government, I would assume, would, or the 24-hour commissioner would, assume, um, would potentially say yes or no and then offer us an opportunity to then consider it as a full council whether it's the right thing to do and we consult some more on it. So I know that Brookie Fest, I think, um, made a submission tonight and they're pro that because of the location and that's what they've been working towards in the last few years. So is question. That your case? Is there a question in there? Yeah. Is that the is that the is that the way it works? Is that the way it flows? Um, through you, Mayor. Um, Keep up, Vince. <laughs> Keep up. Um, my understanding of the way the legislation is constructed is that there is a very lengthy um, decision-making process that councils would need to embark on in making a decision. It requires an amendment to a local environmental planning instrument that can be done through the LEP or you can request the Minister to make an amendment through the State Environmental Planning Policy. So as councillors would be aware, there are a series of um, <laughs> decision points that would apply um, if council were to determine a precinct or a number of precincts that this may be suitable. Um, the 
the, the motion um, is calling on a councillor briefing where we would provide more information on the process and the merits um, of this bit of legislation and whether it is appropriate for Northern Beaches Council. So you understood the question. <laughs> okay, so thank you for that. No other questions. I'll go into um, um, uh, my, my talk or, or my idea behind it. Uh, Councillor Walton, unless it's a question, you've already asked a question? No? Okay, great. Uh, this mayoral minute is to flag to the 24-hour uh, economy commissioner that Northern Beaches Council wants to identify some areas um, we specify for consideration as special entertainment precincts. My personal preference would be for Brookvale and Manly as these are all, all areas already provide entertainment. But I would like a briefing where councillors can put forward ideas and suggestions um, whether they think of any other areas that may benefit um, or maybe they don't agree with Manly or Brookvale. We know that businesses can be easily closed down to a noise complaint. However, a precinct would provide peace of mind to both the resident and the business owners to the hours allowed. Acoustics have always been a problem as our building codes historically have never really accounted um, for any sounds of entertainment because many of our buildings are very, very old. So I would um, ask you to support this so that we can explore this further. Uh, anyone else? So I already have Councillor Walton. Would you like to say something? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. So I, I support the mayoral min minute as printed. Uh, I don't support some of your comments. Um, very supportive of Brookvale. I think it's an appropriate area. Um, the uh, Chamber of Commerce or the um, sub-Chamber of Commerce there are very supportive. I've been, I think it's been a success. Uh, the breweries are, are, appear to be very well run um, and frequented. Um, you don't have... You don't appear at this stage to have the anti alcohol-related antisocial um, behaviour and, and violence that clearly comes out in the Bureau of Crime Statistics and Research uh, that is associated with um, uh, licensed premises in and around. Um, and having uh, policed from 2000 uh, the Manly area uh, in uniform, uh, I have direct experience in relation to that alcohol-related violence and antisocial behaviour uh, from pubs that weren't properly regulated in the past and that used to extend into from 3am to 5am. I have serious concerns uh, with regard to Manly as a location or any other residential, uh, highly uh, populated residential area. Uh, I've already had concerns raised with me by some residents in Freshwater in relation to some of these applications. Uh, to increase the, um, the, the licence opening times of licence premises around there. Uh, and we're also seeing uh, some antisocial behaviour and crime occurring as a result of that. And it's well documented. It's not even my opinion. Um, you just need to go onto the, the Boxer uh, website to see all of that research. So we need to be extraordinarily careful with this. I think Brookvale is a, uh, a perfect location and it's proving itself to be a perfect location. Um, so support it uh, with caution. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Glanville and then Councillor DeLuca. I'll try and keep it brief. Um, I, I think I second a lot of what Dave said about um, the potential for Brookvale to be a really good um, candidate to participate in this. I won't express an opinion one way or another about Manly. I'll leave that to the Manly Ward councillors. Um, but, yeah, the, the businesses in Brookvale have been doing an enormous amount of work to build brand Brookvale and they're really eager to see support from council. So I think it's worth participating to ask the questions, find out more about the process and, and whether it's a good fit for what our aspirations for Brookvale are. 
Okay, thank you. Councillor De Luca. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I too share concerns and I think we do have to approach this with serious caution. As our brilliant Manly Observer recently pointed out, on the Australia Day weekend, subsequent to Australia Day as well, we saw mass uh, antisocial behaviour involving a riot, which unfortunately, due to gangs on the northern beaches, has carried on in other areas. And for those of us who have been around for a very long time, we're fully aware of what uh, has occurred in Manly and particularly on Manly Corso over several years. I will never forget the most brutal assault uh, that was reported in 2007. And I'll actually quote Inspector Puffett, who was quoted in the Sydney Morning Herald back then, who described the incident as one of the most savage attacks I've experienced in my time with New South Wales Police. Sadly, we have a former mayor whose son was also stabbed in Manly due to alcohol and drug-related issues. Uh, we saw in October 2021 the SWAT team descend on Manly after serious assaults, all occasioned by liquor and drugs. We saw the public brawl again in, on the 25th of October 2007 with men in a pub brawl on Manly Corso. And most sadly, we've seen recently on the 27th of January, following the assault on, I think it was the 6th of February, uh, the sad death of a young father following an assault. I do think we need to consider the past. The Manly Liquor Accord was introduced for a reason because of the systemic problems and continued antisocial behaviour witnessed in Manly. Sadly, we keep seeing this even with certain hours and that accord in force. So I do have great hesitance in extending any hours in Manly based on what we've seen even in recent times. So while I'm prepared to support the expression of interest, I do think this needs to be of the most significant questioning and data analysis. And I thank Ms Kerr for providing answers to me during the week on other matters, but all councillors, I would appreciate your consideration of the matters previously alluded to. Thank you. Um, Councillor Ryburn. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is just to quickly say, um, besides feeling personally attacked um, by Manly right now, and the Manly Ward councillors um, are also shaking their heads. <laughs> um, re respectfully, Councillor um, Walton, uh, Manly is a very different place than it was 24 years ago, um, a quarter of a century ago. And notwithstanding, there is still abhorrent behaviour that has, um, that has, has happened. Um, but can I just remind councillors, this is... I feel like we're putting the cart before the horse here. I feel like we haven't even brought the guitar out to tune its strings. Um, and we're getting really into the detail here when what we should be doing is supporting this motion and then having that discussion once we have more information. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Grattan, you were next, and then Councillor Sprott. And just to echo Councillor Ryburn's comments, uh, Manly is no longer the den of iniquity that it may be it once was. Um, and I think what is great about bringing this back to a, um, a briefing is we can have a think about some of the things that this might include, particularly for our young people, so they've got something to do other than just go uh, drinking in licensed premises. And I think what this is about is providing other sources of entertainment um, in that area. So I think this is a terrific idea and fully support your motion. Thank you. And I thank the councillors for all my hard policing work during the 2000s. OK. And it wasn't thank that you, long ago. Councillor um, Sprott. Uh, yeah, um, I will support this. Although, after spending almost 10 years on the safety committee and working with Dave Darcy to, um, to get that under control, um, and, you know, we've got to remember that the Stain Hotel was the second most violent uh, pub in New South Wales at the time. 
with glassings, etc. And we don't want to go back down that road. Mm. Okay. So uh, I too want to echo the caution moving forward with this. Okay, thank you. If no one else has anything, I'll use my quick right of reply to say I am very aware of Manley's past and present. Uh, every year on the um, safety committee, we always um, make sure that there are rangers coordinated working along um, East and West Esplanade, which are usual hotspots for issues in summer. Um, I would like to um, say thank you to um, Superintendent um, Patrick Sharkey for so well identifying that Australia Day would be the issue day um, of hot weather um, young males um, drinking alcohol and scantily clad young ladies. His prediction was absolutely true as to what happened on Australia Day because we had the quietest New Year's Eve in record apparently down at Manly. So I do think the world's changing. And just a reminder, this is an entertainment precinct that we're talking about, not a drink, drinking, um, um, a drinking precinct. So it is up to um, the business owners, I believe, to think outside the box about what other entertainment they could provide after hours. Um, and that could be as simple as poetry, reading in bookstores. There's lots of different things at night um, that could be done um, as entertainment. Not everybody wants to necessarily drink when they go down to Manly, especially the youth, which is, it's come up before. So I look forward to having the discussion and um, listening to what other councillors think about what areas would be a good precinct. Um, or not. So if I can ask now that we put this to the vote. Now, um, I'm anticipating that everyone will be supporting it. If anyone's against, please identify yourself now. Okay, so we're all for it. Please put your hand up. I won't make you stand yet. Passed unanimously. Thank you. You will soon, I'm sure. Okay, next one. <laughs> next one, 7.2. This was a last minute one, councillors, um, which was mentioned briefly on the weekend. This is submissions to the inquiries into financial sustainability of local government. Um, this Merrill Minute is asking to provide two submissions to two inquiries. There is a recognition at a state and federal level that the funding of local government is broken. We welcome both state and federal inquiries into fixing the financing of local government so our community can get a fairer deal of GST funding and state funding. Councillors, we all heard the problems over the weekends about funding issues from the CEO and CFO at a local government level and from the sector as a whole. And of course, councillors, I hope you can support me in asking for these submissions to go ahead. It was pretty dramatic stuff on the weekend, but we know that um, it's also New South Wales wide at the moment. So, does anybody have any questions of staff? Nope. Okay. Anyone have anything to add? Councillor DeLuca. Thanks, Madam Mayor. I support uh, the Merrill Minute before us and much along the lines which I articulated at the last council meeting. Even tonight, we've heard how cost shifting affects this council. We've just discussed how on the Esplanade Manly, our rangers are really undertaking policing work and maintaining public order on East Esplanade when that clearly is a policing matter and that the state government should be introducing, introducing and increasing police patrols in that area. And the same can be said across the northern beaches where we have witnessed so many violent uh, incidents as well as we have an increase in drug dealing and drug trafficking and yet 
sadly, we do not have enough police on the beat to uh, uh, actually address those problems. We have a very good motion um, before us uh, tonight regarding graffiti. We have a motion and a report on e-bikes and e-related vehicles. Now, recently a parent in Chroma uh, and of Chroma High School asked me, why isn't council doing anything to educate children at that school? And I'm sure most councillors here get inquiries every day. Why aren't rangers fining people on the Narrabeen track, on various other areas of the Northern Beaches? And again, it is New South Wales government and New South Wales police jurisdiction, and yet our rangers and our council staff are expected to try and convince people not to speed or use illegal e uh, skateboards, e-scooters uh, and illegal e-bikes. And that is just some examples of where the state government continually legislates its own jurisdiction and is the regulator, and yet we, as a council, are expected to provide resources with very little power to actually act and also very little power to do anything. So I support the motion and I hope that all local MPs will also advocate for this council efficiently and effectively. Um, and I also congratulate the Honourable Member for Pitwater on his continuing work on the safety in relation to the e-bikes. Okay, thank you. With that said, um, put this to the vote. Is anyone against? Everyone four, put your hand up and we'll count this as unanimous. Thank you. Next item up is 8.1. Um, Councillor Page, um, have you got a seconder? Councillor Ryburn as the seconder. Um, First, I'll um, invite the councillors if they've any, anyone's got any questions first on this item. If not, okay, I invite you, councillor. Oh, you've got a question, councillor Causey. Um, it's a question? Or yes, it's a question. Okay. Um, I have actually already asked it of staff, but um, for the benefit of um, other people. Um, the um, So the... The federal grant um, involves a, um, a roads um, section and I just wonder if staff could confirm for me that uh, that grant is not just tied to new roads but also to maintenance of roads. Okay, through to our um, Carolyn. Oh, Carolyn, that's terrible, isn't it? I don't know what to officially call you, actually. CFO. I'm the Executive Manager of Financial Planning and Systems. Um, through you, Mayor. Rolls Thank you the for the question. Um, whilst the, the name of the component of the Financial Assistance Grant is the roads component, it's actually an untied grant. So the council can use it however it wishes. And for us, we use it for road maintenance. Thank you. OK, no more questions. Um, then back to the mover, Councillor Page. Uh, oh, a sorry, a question, sorry, Councillor Crevlin. Yep, thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I don't know if this is readily available through you, Madam Mayor, to the CEO. Um, how much, and I don't know if we're even able to get this, how much GST revenue is generated from our LGA? And also, I don't know if we can get this, how much income tax is paid from our LGA? Uh, have you got the right motion? Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I might ask Ms Foley just to um, uh, advise Council on the Federal Assistant Grants totals, which all comes from GST. Uh, I don't know the answer to the second question. Thank you, through you, Mayor. I'm not sure if that information is available at an LGA level, but we're happy to, to look into that and get back to you on that. Um, the, the federal government allocates 
$3.1 billion to local governments across Australia from that GST pot. And, um, and we know that is just a half a percent of the Commonwealth Government's taxation revenue. Okay, thank you. Any other questions before we go back to the mover? Okay, Councillor Page. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. I really didn't want to um, debate this too much tonight because, you know, you did say you wanted to move through this agenda quite quickly. But I just wanted to state a few facts. And uh, look, you know, Councillor DeLuke has mentioned it tonight. That you, and we all know how I feel about cost shifting from the weekend. The fact that we even call this a grant is a joke. I mean, the financial assistance grant, this is money, this is GST that we've, get, that we've collected, that we've paid. I just find it to be an absolute joke. And now to have it at risk, it just, it, it, it annoys me no end. I won't go into it too much further, but what I do want to say is part of the recommendation, whilst I 100% support it, can we strengthen it? Can we put some really str strong words in there? Because it just sounds so polite. And I'm over being polite with this mob. Have you got any well, um, recommendations? I'll, actually, I'll, ask, I'll, I'll turn that into a question to you, Madam Mayor, to the CEO. Is there a way of putting some stronger words into this so that they know we're, we're, they're just going to read and go, oh, OK, I want something to really actually open their eyes and make them pay attention? Uh, thank, um, <laughs> thank you, uh, Mayor. Um, I'm... I'm uh, confident that uh, in um, advocating the, the council's mm. position uh, at the National General Assembly, the mayor will um, ensure that uh, council's um, uh, whole and full concerns are, are properly expressed uh, and uh, that, that opportunity will arise uh, at that conference. Um, thank you. Well, then, that's the case. I'll, I'll, I'll close off there. But all... Could I just suggest you take your um, steel cap boots on the day, please? Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> Northern Beaches, is, uh, as you know, is number one for, for all kinds of cost shifting now. It's really incredible. Councillor Ryburn, you were the seconder? Just to share Councillor Page's uh, frustration, and I'll reserve my right. Thanks. OK. Does anybody else have um, any thoughts that they'd like to share, or are we happy to move on this? OK. All right, it almost feels like it's another unanimous one. Anyone against? All right, hands up if you're for. Moved unanimously, thank you. Okay, 11.1. Um, oh, I think, no. Have I missed one? Sorry, 10.1. Councillor Glanville, are you happy to move as is? I, as I had um, two additions, it's probably better if someone else moves it so that we don't end up in a uh, awkward spot. Councillor Grattan, Councillor Bingham. Okay, first I'll invite any councillors who have any questions of staff. I'm kind of stunned. I was expecting a question and we don't have one. Okay, I'll invite the mover to speak. Happy to just go straight to Councillor Glanville for her additions. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have sent through two additions, but I'm actually going to move them separately because it may be that councillors are supportive but of one but not the other and give them an opportunity to vote on the one or not the other if they wish. Uh, I've been told by governance that I can move them separately. Yeah. Is there one you'd prefer over the other? So we can... I mean, we should be doing it... We can... Um, well, we can go with the one that's on screen first. Um, 
the purpose of this roundtable adopts um, a suggestion which was preferred by the Wesley Mission, who are um, advocates in this space and see the harm that is caused by um, gambling to the community, um, and to hold an, an annual roundtable discussion um, with local public health and gambling harm-related stakeholders. Um, Council's role would be to con convene that meeting um, and to essentially bring those stakeholders together on a regular annual basis in order to progress understanding and action on local gambling harm-related issues um, and make sure that service providers and, and local health um, services in this space are um, understanding what others are doing, avoiding duplication, um, and, and regularly checking in on how progress is, is coming along from all the, the ro different roles that different organisations play in this space. Okay. Does anybody... All right, I can see. Councillor De Luca. Uh, questions? Thanks, Madam Mayor. Just a question to the CEO. We've just been discussing cost shifting. Would it be possible to enact that clause in view of no costings being given? How much would that actually cost us to do? Through to Mr Kerr. Um, right. Okay, lights on. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, to enact the, res the recommendation as, as printed there would require some um, staff time to prepare and convene the round table. This was a submission that was made in re um, response to our exhibition of the draft policy and the staff considered it would take around 200 hours of time to, of a staff member's time to do that work. And subsequent to that, depending on what comes out of the round table discussion would then create an a, potentially an additional um, list of things for the council to consider doing. Uh, thank you for the advice, uh, Mr Kerr. Through you, Madam Mayor, could I ask the CEO then, how would that clause then accord with clause 11.10 of the Code of Meeting Practice? Mr CEO. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the uh, the uh, recommendation in itself um, would require additional funding uh, of uh, staff unless the council was uh, to um, to uh, discontinue another service or, or, or um, um, facility of um, uh, uh, comparable um, uh, time. So um, in itself uh, that, that would require additional resources and would be counter to the uh, code of meeting practice. Um, before we move on, because I know that a few of you have lights up and I'm writing your names down as I can. Is it in order or not? Um, but just... It's not. Um, before we move on, can we have a seconder um, for you, please? Thank you. Councillor Causey is the seconder. Right. OK, back to questions. Someone needs to release a light. I have Councillor Robins, Councillor Manano, Perez, Councillor Regan, or with. So, in view of the advice of the CEO, is that uh, clause two, as it currently stands, out of order? Th thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillors, yes, that is the case. Could I make a suggestion then? So it's not out of order, and the intent's still there, and that's council host a roundtable discussion um, with Wesley Mission taking... Is Wesley Mission recommended the... Was it? So Wesley Mission to, to host an annual roundtable within a council premises, i.e. this room, perfectly set up. Um, they could lead it. They've got all the resources. This is their thing. Uh, I think that if we were to maybe put in that point saying offer um, a third party, if you have to be independent, like 
and what I'm suggesting is something like Wesley Mission to, and we just simply host it, the venue and invite stakeholders, advertise it on our email, etc. If that's acceptable, Kristen. Okay. Um, um, I am happy to do whatever it takes to have a lawful motion that um, makes everyone happy to progress this important issue for our community. Okay, Councillor Robins, your light was up. Oh, sorry, Councillor Deluki, do you have further questions? Thank you. I do have concern with that. I don't think it is out of order, is that correct, Mr CEO? But we're actually then preferring one particular organisation so, if, with the permission of the uh, original mover and seconder, could I suggest that local state, so that two, read that this council... ..that this council calls upon federal and state local MPs... to convene a roundtable discussion with public health and gambling harm-related stakeholders and that council writes formally to each local, federal and state MP to affect this. So that would leave it to the federal and state MPs to convene and that would mean that all tiers of government are involved. So just a point of order, is this an, is this an addition to the amendment or is this an... Ad so it's a suggestion to the current amendment. So Councillor Causey and Councillor... Um, Glanville as the original mover, are you happy with that suggestion? Um, I, can I go first? <laughs> um, I, I believe there's value in the council actually hosting um, this uh, forum um, because it keeps it close to the ground here. And so I think we could simply say... Um, OK, Councillor Causey, we need a yes or a no to no, whether you accept no, it. No. No. OK. And as the original mover, Councillor Glanville? Yeah, I, I think I um, agree with Councillor Causey's point um, that we, as council, I think, heard pretty strongly from the community that they want us to take a, a leadership kind of role and, and I certainly take on board the feedback that if we can um, share that responsibility perhaps with a third party to deliver it, I, I think that it wouldn't be resource intensive for us to act as, as host. OK, um, thank you. All right, I'm going to jump to Count, uh, Deputy Mayor Ryburn for a moment. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Just a, a question to staff to clarify what this amendment now is. Notwithstanding, the intention of consultation is good, but can the staff please comment if we not only just can do that, but if there's, this already exists, if we're already doing it, um, so that we don't just wordsmith and cause a lot of duplication here on the chamber, but also operationally for staff? Um, through you, Mayor, the um, Department of Gaming and Racing already have a independent panel on gaming reform that exists and it has relevant stakeholders in terms of gambling and harm minimisation um, and that meets on a regular basis. It is not a Northern Beaches specific group, it is a, a wider state initiative. Um, so there is some work already occurring in that space. 
Okay, before I jump to my other initials I have on my list here, um, I'm just thinking about the fact that um, we've got a policy, a council policy that we want to adopt um, and we have obviously um, experts in their field in the area who probably would like to have some kind of input, though they've probably already had input into this, but would maybe not a suggestion then be um, thinking of council resources that from a safety committee perspective where we have already New South Wales Health and some of the others on there that a subcommittee be um, uh, created because we've been, I've, I've certainly been on a subcommittee for sexual assault. Um, could there not be a subcommittee where that is one of the remits of bringing those experts in the area? We don't necessarily, necessarily choose you guys are the ones who have that um, expertise in knowing who's in our area to have input back into the policy. I just am worried about that we're having a round table about what, because I feel it should lead back into the policy that we've got going out. Is it still effective? Does it need to change? Um, if I could have an idea back through um, you, Mr Kerr. Uh, thank you, Mayor. The, um, the safety, Community Safety Advisory Committee covers a number of different um, stakeholders in the community and a lot of those are people who are involved with the um, impact of gambling on people's lives in terms of the, the social impact. Um, I would raise some concern that it would still require some level of staff resourcing to, to um, do that um, in terms of a subcommittee or the like um, and I don't know what that is at this point in time without doing some further work on that. Okay, thank you. Could I, could uh, I make a suggestion? I was going which... to say, I've actually just checking first, Councillor Robins, I had your name up. Are you pulling it out or still pulling out a comment or? I just had a comment and it might have been and gone. Questions at the moment, that's. Yeah. Councillor Graham, when she's doing her initial um, uh, preamble, talked about local and I just wondered mm. if she wanted to put with local public health and gambling in. There. Sorry, that's just... Yeah, I'm very happy to put that in. That's probably a, a... My original draft had that and then I inadvertently didn't put it in there, but thank you for the pick-up. OK, question first, Councillor Manano perez and then Councillor Regan. Uh, two questions, actually. Um, I understand the idea behind this, but my first question to the mover of the motion is what's the objective of the round table? what we're trying to achieve, or is just a feel-good talk fest. And uh, the second question to the staff is, um, I recall there's a number of initiatives across New South Wales, there's a number of forums, there's a number of conferences, uh, state government's got a number of initiatives as well on, on gambling and, and arm minimization, so I'm kind of going along with Casa de Luca in the sense that is this a bit of volunteer cost chiefing that mm. we're taking upon ourselves? Because there's already so much out there. Shouldn't we be better off in sending our staff to some of these forums, contributing to those forums, learn from those forums instead of starting a new one? So that's the two questions. Thank you. Um, might I respond to the first one? Yes. Um, I see the point as it providing an opportunity for our local health, public health and service providers to um, check in with each other, to avoid duplication, to understand, you know, raise any trends that they've observed and share that intel um, for them to provide, um, you know, discuss with council its policy. It's not intended to produce more work for staff, but for free discussion to take place between local service providers. Um, I think that there's a point of differentiation between what this um, round table would achieve and what others like the um, independent f um, panel that um, Mr Kerr referred to. That particular panel 
doesn't deal with local specific issues. Um, my understanding from Wesley Mission is that the minutes and a lot of the decision making and discussion of that panel is actually confidential and so it's not open to the public. We couldn't just sort of send a rep to kind of learn and observe. It does produce some public information but um, so, some of their deliberations are not public. Um, this particular round table I don't see as seeking to engage in the sort of law reform that that independent panel is engaged in. It's um, more intended to provide a sort of place for local service providers and council to, um, to discuss this issue. And I'm aware from Wesley Mission that Fairfield Council has um, initiated um, a similar type of round table um, initiative with public health service providers. Um, I believe that there may also be discussions at Inner West about this concept as well. Okay, Councillor Regan. I was... Oh, sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, back to staff for the second part. Uh, through you, Mayor. The report on pages 34 and 35 identifies a lot of the work that is being done in this space in relation to um, increasing awareness of the impact of gambling on people's lives. Um, the federal government report, um, You Win Some, You Lose More, was released midway through last year and it provided some clear directions on the potential impact. Um, there is ongoing reform with the clubs and um, areas that have electronic gaming machines in relation to um, looking at other future um, initiatives to reduce the impact of um, gambling and gambling-related advertising on the most vulnerable people in our community. Okay, thank you. Councillor Regan. I, I just listened to what Mr Kerr has said and the hundreds of hours that it would take, etc. I take that on board. I take on board what Councillor Manano Perez said in relation to, you know, this is being delivered by state, federal, other bits. They're just another independent third party. There's nothing stopping them from coming here uh, and using local public health and gambling harm related stakeholders to host a meeting here. So maybe if you just change that to host a roundtable discussion to be delivered by a third party with local public health and gambling harm related stakeholders and invite our local community to participate, i.e. to have a Q&A with, with that sort of thing. That can all be run by someone like a Wesley Mission and no doubt others. And, you know, if, and I think it would be healthy given that there is a, a significant interest in our community to want to know more about this and hear what's happening and the impacts it's happening. So I don't see how this is going to be any impost on our council for just using this venue. Yet there might be a bit of staff there, like Robbie keeping an eye on things and at the table, and, but there'll be other stakeholders that they're letting people in. Um, they can sit at this great table here. We can have the, you know, they can have the microphones and the like and that access, and they can take questions from the public. I think we just keep it simple and just maybe just change that to host a round table discussion to be delivered by an independent third party. It could be the federal or state government with Wesley Mission and others because the local community wants to hear more and wants to know more. So I don't see this as a really big deal. Okay. Um, Councillor um, Glanville, as the mover, would you accept that? And invite okay. the local community. Um, sorry, did you want to add inviting the local community? Do you think it makes it more for your benefit? Um, yeah, happy to include that. I mean, I, I'm, I think the submissions from the community on this policy were very eager to see us do our part on this issue. So I'm happy for that for suggestion in order to keep this issue with forward momentum. And just for the CEO's benefit, invite members of the local community. I'm just saying an open forum. So to like send an email out on our database, I'm not saying specific members and... Okay, thank you. Question? Question from Councillor Regan. Thanks, Mr CEO. I note the advice of Councillor Regan that it would only take Robbie to maintain the chamber. 
Would that be correct? How many staff would be involved? And also, can you confirm that all state and federal members have an allowance to conduct such meetings and why wouldn't state and federal members assist financially with conducting such meetings? Through the CEO. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm, I'm uh, unable to answer the second part of the question regarding uh, what um, funding state and federal MPs might have. Um, what I can say uh, is that uh, in the event council resolves to host a roundtable discussion uh, that, is, that is delivered by a third party and we coordinate that, the resources for that would not be significant uh, and we could do that within our uh, existing budget. Um, uh, Madam Mayor, um, um, if, if Council is minded to do that, um, you, you may even invite the um, amendment to be part of the motion um, as, it, as it would uh, all fit together. Yes. Okay, Councillor Walton, you had your light on? No, the CEO just answered my question that there will be no, nothing apart from normal operational costs to um, meet that amendment. Okay, Councillor Move the motion Bingham. be put. I move the motion be put. Okay, so we're voting on the amendment or would the mover and the seconder be happy to move item number two to the original motion since it would say the same thing? Yes, we're happy to uh, absorb that. Okay. Now, you did mention you had another amendment. Sorry, can I just... Councillor Madam DeLuca? Mayor, could I seek some procedural advice? Originally, Councillor Glanville said that she wished to you uh, deal with each of her proposals as a separate motion or amendment, could I suggest, as some in the chamber also suggested, that we vote on each of the separate clauses in seriatim? So I'm happy to move that as a procedural motion, that each uh, clause of the actual motion be voted on in seriatim. Do we have, um, if we have the third item up, that's the last item? Councillor, Councillor, well, actually, it wasn't Councillor um, Grattan, it was um, Councillor Glanville. Um, yes, I think that Councillor DeLuca's suggestion of voting in seriatim's um, sound for allowing councillors to pick and choose which parts they agree with. Okay, so for a procedural motion, um, does um, everyone agree to move in seriatim? If you agree, please put your hand up. Everyone bar... Councillor Regan. Declare that moved. And so... We're just waiting for governance to catch up.
nice. For those following on, in case you're wondering what's just happening, um, what we're going to do is be voting line by line um, to see which parts we all agree on or the majority agree on and which parts we don't. Yeah. Okay. So point three hasn't been raised or discussed yet. So, um, Councillor Glanville, would you like to talk about item number three? Yes. Um, this is an issue that continues to be raised from the, the public consultation. It was pretty clear to me that um, there was strong community support for council taking this stand. I've sought to have a wording that allowed some flexibility for staff where it wasn't possible or feasible to implement with any given contract but to make their best attempt. Um, I think when, for example, Rookvale Oval was called Lotto Land, I think the community felt it was an incredibly poor taste for council property to be named after a gambling company and that kind of poor taste issue could be avoided by giving this um, direction to staff that I have tried to frame in a way where, um, you know, if for a particular lessee it's just not feasible, um, there are ways forward still. We've had this debate before, the community wants it. I strongly encourage you to support it because these sorts of advertising cues for people with problem gambling are just incredibly harmful. Okay, do you... I need a seconder for, for the third part. Councillor Causey. Questions um, of staff on item number three. Councillor Walton. I'll be speaking against three. Okay, we're not up to that part yet. Councillor Manano perez questions to staff. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, once again, I, I do understand what, it, what Councillor uh, Glanville is trying to achieve. I'm just not sure if this is not only practical, but actually lawful, because if there's a tender situation, then this should be reflected on the tender document, so people that apply. Um, so a uh, question to CEO is, how practical and lawful would this be? Uh, through you, Mahines. Um, in terms of lawful, it's lawful. Um, in terms of practical, we'll just need to have a clear definition of direct gambling, um, advertising. Uh, I would point out that um, Council has over 100 um, sports clubs leases and licences and um, has a number of user agreements that have indirect um, <coughs> gambling references such as uh, DY, RSL, etc. Yeah, I mean, for instance, um, <coughs> a raffle that the club is running, is that allowed or what are you going to do? I remember having this discussion with uh, <coughs> Manly Brookvale, Brookvale Oval, and I, I recall very well the discussion we had then. I'm just not <coughs> sure this is actually practical because uh, are we going to say to the Surf Life Savers, now you can't run a sausage sizzle or you can't run a raffle. <laughs> uh, look, I think it's an area that I'm not comfortable in getting in, basically, from, from commercial and legal reasons. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Councillor Page. Um, Madam Mayor, I, <coughs> I, don't, I, I suppose my question is to you through to Mr Kerr, I imagine. But we're listening to all of this, all of this and talking about banning all... Um, advertise it on gambling, I mean, I don't have an issue with banning it, but at the same time, every time you ban it from your bus shelters, the bus that's going past your bus shelter is covered in lotto. 
you know, or, I mean, so I, I kind of don't see where we're... My question is, how, how is this effective if we go down that road when the buses themselves are covered in gambling advertising? Um, through you, Mayor. Yeah, this, this policy position would only um, apply to leases on council-owned facilities. So um, uh, Sydney Transport for New South Wales buses are not council's infrastructure and therefore it's up to that body to do that. Um, similarly to advertising for um, private shop fronts or other things like that, we have news agents that promote gambling. We have uh, the TAB in our local area. We have lots of other things that were not council premises but would still contain um, gambling advertising. Just to follow on, but what about our bus shelters? Because the bus shelters were actually mentioned in this as well. There is an exi sorry, through you, Mayor. There is an existing uh, contract in play in relation to bus shelters, and in renewing that contract position, council would need to set its position clearly. If it were to ban advertising, it would have potentially an impact on um, revenue or what could be displayed in those bus shelters. Okay. No other questions? Yeah, I, I do have one. Yep. Th thank you. Um, Councilor Manano Perez. Yeah. Um, sorry, forgot what the question was. <laughs> thank you. Uh, what did I want? Oh, yes, I know. Sorry. F forgive my ignorance, but isn't there both federal and state legislation that regulate what kind of advertising you can do, in what medium, what time? Uh, after hours, during sports events and so on. Isn't this covered by both federal and state legislation? Through you, Mr. Sia. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, um, I understand there um, is a code um, in respect of advertising that limits the, uh, uh, the ability to uh, advertise for gambling to certain times. And, of course, we obey the legislation, I'm assuming, in all the tenders and so on. Councillor okay. Gensher, you. you've got a question? Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, through you. Um, I, I do struggle with um, the definition, I guess, of direct gambling advertising. Currently, pubs, clubs use players' lounge, jewel lounge, whatever, um, which, in effect, I guess, skirts outside of what would be considered direct gambling advertising. I just, I just think this is, we don't see, would that be fair? Uh, but I, I don't see, is there a definition existing for direct gambling advertising? Uh, through you, man, no, not that we're aware of. We would have to apply our own practical application of, of that. Okay, uh, Councillor Causey, do you have a question? Oh, I've forgotten it. Okay, great. All right, let's go and um, vote. If no one, or, okay, Councillor DeLuca. Thanks, Madam uh, Mayor. I don't think anyone in this chamber advocates for gambling, drug, or alcohol advertising. Fundamentally and philosophically, we're all significantly opposed to that. And for those of us who've worked so long in welfare, we know that alcohol, drugs and gambling are the major causes of domestic violence, suicide and other antisocial behaviour and most importantly and sadly, crime and murder. However, we need to leave this to experts who are properly appointed and have proper information. And I cannot commend enough the work of the Independent Liquor and Gaming Authority, particularly under the former chair, Mr Philip Crawford, who, because of his success in trying to regulate effectively uh, the gambling industry, he has since been promoted and appointed to the position of Commissioner of the Independent Casino Authority. Any prohibition on advertising I don't think will be effective. 
I don't think a round table in this chamber will be effective. It should be led by our federal and state MPs who have the power to legislate. And I think it's actually uh, a somewhat kick to us that we're holding a forum, we have no legislative powers to stop anything or legislate anything, it is a state or federal MP. And it is ironic that we have spent so much time in this chamber this evening talking about cost shifting and here we are doing this at the initiative of some councillors when there is a much more effective way to do it. The decision makers must lead this. And until the state and federal parliaments become serious about not just gambling, but the control of drugs, the control of alcohol, we are whistling in the wind and wasting our time. As I said, there's not one person I feel in this chamber that advocates for any of those things. However, we need to ensure that we're keeping our local state and our federal MPs on their toes and that they are taking responsibility and actually doing their jobs. Okay, thank you. Councillor Walton. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I agree with uh, the comments of Councillor De Luca um, with regard to many of this. So um, uh, it's, it's hard to disagree with one, two and three when you're talking about lotto land, um, but that's not what three is saying. So three is uh, the remit and the the reach of the uh, the wording of that will will catch capture the small bowling club that may have Kino uh, as a revenue raising opportunity. Um, I also uh, believe that um, as uh, Councillor Manaro Perez stated. Uh, that it's unlawful. So we have the Independent Liquor and Gaming Authority. That's the statutory decision maker responsible for a range of liquor registered clubs and uh, gaming uh, machine regulatory functions. Um, and they've got a wide uh, remit uh, as a regulator and they use, um, uh, they use other government departments uh, to regulate. Uh, and they do reviews of liquor and gaming decisions, um, uh, merits reviews, disciplinary decisions, second and third strike decisions, closure orders, gaming decisions. There's a whole host. Um, and this number three aspect of the motion appears to be uh, going into the realms of um, their decision-making uh, regulatory uh, remit. So I believe that there would be potentially legislation and regulation that we would be in, impinging on. But regardless of all of that, uh, it's, it's overreach of government, um, that um, point three. Uh, again, the intent is good. Uh, we don't want a lot, lotto land type of advertising on, uh, on Brookvale Oval, um, and, but that's an extreme example, uh, whereas this would capture uh, Keno at your local club. Okay, thank you. I'm suggesting that we move very shortly into um, voting on these individual items. Councillor Causey, um, what would you like to say okay. as on item three? I would just simply like to say that we've already heard from staff that they don't believe that this would be illegal. And I would also just point out that it's doesn't seem that long ago to me, although it probably is 30 or you know, even getting on 40 years ago, where it was quite normal to see tobacco advertising everywhere. And I think it's incumbent on us to do everything we can to try and prevent this sort of triggering for um, problem gamblers who, who don't want to have this sort of stuff in front of their faces and struggle to, to fight the urge to go and spend their money in this way and I think we should do everything that we can there's I don't know I don't didn't think there was any rule in the the law book, book that said that councils can't deal with this issue and I also think that on 
the second point, um, there is a lot to be gained from us finding out on the ground um, what issues there are about gambling within our local community. And there will be things that will, would come out from a round table that you couldn't possibly find out from a, a broader state or federal um, forum. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Regan. This is just number three, right? Yes, it was supposed to be item number oh, three. I just but want to point to out, have... thanks. I just want to point out that it says very clearly in there, um, and the Chief Executive used best endeavours to negotiate terms which would minimise or eliminate direct gambling viewable from the public domain. It doesn't say that DYRSL, which was mentioned a couple of times, couldn't advertise, just can't advertise gaming. Um, actual poker machine games. It doesn't stop Kino, it doesn't kill Kino in bowling clubs because we know that when we negotiated, I think it's councillor, former councillor Pat Daly, when we put that in about the bowling club at uh, North Manly, at Warringah Golf Club there. So we know it's doable and council can do these things. And if we are fair income, as uh, Councillor DeLuca said, we all don't want to encourage advertising of, of this sort of nature and we don't all believe, in, and we believe gaming is, is bad and harmful, etc. then why wouldn't we take a, a positive initiative and just simply um, ask staff to use their best endeavours to negotiate terms which would minimise or eliminate? It's not saying they have to do it or believe it. It's not going to kill your keno or anything else. It's just very simple and I think you're all over-complicating it for goodness knows why, but I think it's quite simple and quite effective and we should just simply lead by example. I thought that's what we were here to do, lead by example. If that's what we truly believe about gambling and the like, and that's what we've said, then let's do it. It's not that hard to define. Okay, Councillor Bingham and then Councillor Sprott. I just want to say with regards to point three, we are the owner of the building. We can do and dictate whatever we like for the external use of that building. It does not affect what happens inside. So I will be supporting this motion. Okay, okay. Councillor Sprott. We've had 242 two against, I say put it to the vote. Okay, all 242 two against. All those for um, moving um, this procedure? Anyone against? No, 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 we're first voting on your motion that was to be put. Yeah. <laughs> was there anyone against Stewart's motion? No, that was unanimous. Uh, do we need a seconder for that? No. All right. Or it should say the motions be put, I suspect. All right. So, we vote on number one that council adopt... I can't even see it now. Um, council adopt the gambling harm minimisation policy. Anyone against? I suspect this is going to be unanimous. Everyone for? Put your hand up. Declare that carried. Okay, number two. Host a roundtable discussion to be delivered by a third party. All those in favour? All right, stand. Here we go. All right, so we've got Councillor Glanville, Councillor Grattan, Councillor Bingham, myself. <laughs> if I stand, the meeting stops, there's the issue. Councillor Ryburn. Councillor um, Robins, Councillor Manano Perez, um, Councillor Regan, and Councillor Walton. Or wasn't you? Oh, and Councillor Causey. Do you need the. Uh, okay, all those against? See, this is where you get to stretch your, your legs. If you could stand. Don't worry, we get a 10 minute break soon if we're lucky. All right. Okay, those against, Councillor Genscher, Councillor Page, Councillor DeLuca, Councillor Sprock, Councillor Crevlin. Declare that carried, I think. Yep. Number three, renewing or entering a council-owned premises. All those in favour, please stand. 
Councillor Glanville, Councillor Grattan, Councillor Bingham, Councillor Causey, Councillor Genscher, myself, Councillor Sprott, Councillor Robins, Councillor Regan. All those... All those against, if you could stand. Sorry. Councillor Page, Councillor Ryburn, Councillor DeLuca, Councillor Crevlin, Councillor Manano Perez, Councillor Walton. <coughs> Declare that carried. Can I seek your indulgence to thank former Councillor Pat Daly for his work in this space? Um, crossing political lines for the good of the community. Uh, I think if you knew Councillor Daly, this is not crossing any lines. Trust me. <laughs> All right, with that, um, because we are at... Yes, just hold on a moment. There's a lot of governance discussion. Okay, don't get too excited. Those were all amendments. So now we um, will be voting on... That. Uh, just let me double-check that. Okay, governance seems to be a little bit um, questioning about whether we did do it in seriatim. There's still a disagreement. Just hold on a moment, please. Okay, so apparently there's an issue with point three that could be counted as an addition. So... Okay, all right. We're apparently in agreement. So, procedural motion for a ten-minute break. break. Councillor Sprott, yeah. um, seconded by Councillor Crevlin. All those in favour... I like a short. Thing. Anyone against? No, it's unanimous. So I declare we're having a break at 13 minutes past eight. See you back in 10 minutes. Thank you very much.
draft waste and circular economy strategy. I have down um, Miranda Causey. Are you moving as is, Councillor Causey? Um, I'm happy to move it as is, but I'm also happy to let uh, Councillor Glanville move it because she was involved with it with the... OK, um, I need group. someone to move it as is, without yeah. any changes. Are you happy to move it as is, Kristen? Yep, Kristen is. No changes, no additions. I moved. OK, Councillor Causey was the one who pulled it out. And let's share it around. Who would like a name on there? Councillor Ryburn. How about that? Too late, sorry, you should have been faster. Yes, Councillor Ryburn is the seconder. All right, so. Yeah, right, just, I'm discriminated against down here. Yes, we're up to item 11.1. .1. And I am missing one of my important pieces of paper. Okay. Questions of the staff. Any councillors have questions of the staff? Councillor Causey. Um, okay, so I'm going to begin by saying that, um, well, first of all, that I congratulate staff for their work on this strategy and the 179 members of the community who made submissions on it and also thank the Environment Working Group, of which Councillor Glanville is the chair, um, for their contributions. Um, so this strategy is important because we don't have infinite resources and are currently creating 100,000 tonnes of household waste each year on the northern beaches. Waste and litter management are the Council's largest service, with 11 million bin collections every year, costing the Council $58.5 million this financial year. So it was great to see concerns raised in feedback about the number of recyclable, reusable materials, materials still being sent to landfill and desire to increase the volume of recyclable materials picked up in bulky goods collections um, and through reuse, scavenging or separate collections. Now, however, I'll just flag that at this point I had um, intended putting up an amendment, but I've decided to leave it as is because I know there's been so much community consultation and work on it and particularly the environment group had gone over it and there's a lot of people um, with a lot of commitment to this area in that group. However, I am still concerned about the use or the issue particularly of single-use plastics. Australia-wide plastic consumption has increased from 60 per cent has increased 60% from 92 kilos in the year 2000 to 148 kilos per person in 2021. Um, yet only 15% of all that plastic waste generated over the last 20 years has been recovered through recycling and energy recovery. Residents asked me why we can't have a soft plastics collection um, and that was reflected in the public consulta consultation. The simple response is there's no market for it. However, the underlying explanation is that there has never been a reliable way of recycling any plastics, and we shouldn't be fooling ourselves that we can do so. This is one area of waste that we must eliminate. So-called plastic recycling is more expensive than producing new plastic, so there is little incentive for anyone to do so. Um, hence the Red Cycle soft plastic stockpile of 100,000 tonnes across the country. Secondly, you can't really recycle plastic anyway. Rather, the process breaks them down into their chemical components with toxic byproducts and using a large amount of energy. There are also problems involved in separating it from other materials and even pet uh, plastics and other plastics can only be so-called recycled once and at the very most twice. By including recycled plastics in other products, we're simply allowing it to proliferate in our environment. Um, producing more problems in the future for its disposal. Um, so I, I believe that we need to um, be very clear that we are still kicking the can down the road with um, any sort of plastics recycling. Um, however, on everything else, I believe this strategy gives the Council a firm footing for a circular economy on the northern beaches. Uh, and I'll leave it there. OK, thank you. As the mover, that was your... Um um, invitation then to talk. 
Um, but before we move to hearing from the seconder, I'm inviting any questions from councillors to the staff. Okay, so then I'll invite the seconder to speak. Councillor Ivan. I reserve. Thanks. Okay, um, so now any other councillors, if you want to put your thoughts forward, please put them forward now. Councillor Glanville. Thanks. Um, I just wanted to thank the staff um, for their hard work on this. It's a really great policy and I'm really excited to see council roll out the initiatives in here. There's so much good stuff in here that the community is really passionate to see. We've had so much engagement, probably one of the most engaged with pieces of policy that we've actually put forward, you know, not I think 900 people have contributed to this from my recollection, mm -hmm. um, including the Environment Strategic Reference Group, but multiple working groups, consultation with different community members and also a really broad cross range of community members were engaged with to try and make sure that we were hitting a really broad range of community views and um, I think, you know, what the community said was pretty clear. They, they really want to see a circular economy. They're really passionate about progressing things like FOGO. They want to see council be a leader and, and recognise that we have our role to play and some of those responsibilities rest with state and government. But, you know, council can um, work collaboratively with other councils and with state and federal to, you know, push things like product stewardship schemes. So this is a really great opportunity for the community, for our environment, and also for, um, you know, our social fabric, because a lot of what goes into this policy is initiatives like, you know, the community hub up at Kimbricky, which is about reuse, repair, recycle, but it's also about the social connections that different community members make. Um, you know, we have older residents who go and repair toys and use their skills to, to make new things there and repair. And so it's, it's just a beautiful piece of environment and community working together on um, making a more sustainable community. So thank you to the staff and the community. Um, I look forward to, to seeing all these initiatives be rolled out. Thank you. Councillor Regan. Just echo pretty much everything. Councillor Glanville said, but also to go back to the previous council and um, single out the previous strategic reference group and those members, some of which are still on the current one, which is fantastic and no doubt had some input if they weren't in this current one. So well done. It has been a work in progress. Thank you, Todd, for steering that through and uh, thank you to the former councillors. Um, I think it was McTaggart. I think it was Councillor Warren and probably even that lunatic Pat Daly as well might have been on that committee as well at some stage. But... Um, but well done for getting it started and, and, and done. And I think it's fantastic so that we're all here and hopefully voting unanimously on it. I'll just back that up by saying um, previous Councillor Daly is sitting in the audience and is laughing um, because, yes, we used to have a lot of jokes, so that's not being taken personally. Councillor Sprott. Um, yeah, through you, Madam Mayor, just a question to staff. Um, the... Uh, waste tender, was that, there was meant to be a, a um, metal recycling truck go around for the bulky goods cleanup, um, taking out the metal recycling. Can you just update us on that, please? Uh, Three you, Mayor Hines. Uh, good question, Council. Let me look into that and come back to you. Could you... Just confirm that that was part of the tender? Three Mayor Hines, I just need to check that in the original tender documents because I wasn't involved in that process, so I just want to clarify that before I answer. Okay. Um, yeah, if you could get that back to Council, please, that would be much appreciated. Okay. Any other councillors who would like to speak? Um, as the original mover... Um, would you like to have a final say? Nope. Okay, all happy. Okay, so. <laughs> no, we all just stood. So I, I suspect that I feel around the room, around the table here, that you're going to be unanimous. Is anyone against it? No, all those four, put your hands up, please. Declare that unanimous and thank you very much. 
and I echo the incredible work that staff have put into this report. Thank you. Well done. Okay, next one, 11.2, a response to a notice of motion return and earn scheme, which came from um, Councillor Crevlin. So do we have a seconder for... Yeah, just moving as is. Moving as is, no additions. Councillor Page seconding it. Thank you. Really. And um, oh, before you go on and, and say your thing, Sorry. just any questions at star, to staff? None? Okay, thank you. I invite you to speak, Councillor Crevlin. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I want to just expressly thank the staff for all the work on this. Um, it, it is really fantastic to see a new proposal or a new process being adopted. Um, at at this point, I feel that the biggest winner is that more rubbish is going to be recycled and less is going to be going into landfill. So um, it's, um, I'm just very, very pleased, very chuffed and thanks to the team. Terrific. Thank you. Um, um, as the seconder, Councillor uh, Page, you're reserving your right? You don't have... Yes? Okay. All right. Questions of the staff. Does anybody have questions of the staff? No is the reply. So any other councillors? I can see Councillor Sprott. Would you like to say something? Um, yeah, I just wanted to acknowledge that this is a great program. Um, this was... Uh, I first initiated this with uh, the former CEO, Ray Brownlee, got, the, um, got this on the cards and we got a, a first off payment of a million dollars and then $30,000 every month after that. And it's good to see that we're continuing to push that envelope on getting our money from those 10 cent cans. So thank you. Okay, if anyone else has anything to say, otherwise we will put this to the vote. Anyone against? Okay, everyone, it will be unanimous. Please raise your hands. Unanimous, thank you. Declare that carried. Next one is 11.3, New South Wales Beach Watch Program. Um, Moran, uh, Councillor Causey, are you moving as is? Oh, oh okay, oh, Councillor oh. Page. Sorry, you were first, yes. Councillor Page, you moving as is? No. You're not? I need someone first to find out if Councillor Causey, you're moving as is? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Someone needs to release a light, so to speak. A councillor can move straight away what they so wish. You don't require, you're not obligated to require that the actual recommendation be moved immediately. So, Councillor Page had the call, so she can move her motion first, as a motion, not uh, as an I, amendment. I, I absolutely agree, Councillor DeLuca. It's just for a bit of streamlining here because it starts out one way and then we, we kind of tend to make turns. So, I'm trying to find out who follows us is, and then obviously the second person mm. or whoever can the make only, an amendment. The only problem is that if she were to move it as an amendment, then she doesn't get a right of reply. So therefore that's why she would want to move her motion first. Okay, Councillor Page. Thank, look. I'm hoping I will get support because guess what I'm about to bang on about again. So I, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm gathering your strengthening of I'm certain <laughs> part of of the recommendation, yeah. Councillor Page. So, all right, I, I've, I've it's it's got, and I'll just pause here for a second to say I can't always anticipate what the addition may be. So um, actually, in Councillor Page's. Um, I, I know already. I, I, I magically know what she's going to be adding. All right. Sorry, Councillor Page. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, again, this is just another abhorrent example of cost shifting, of, of, of cost shifting that I'm so disgusted in this particular one. Councillor Ryburn. Before I go into debate, I probably need to put the what the word in that I, I would yeah. like. Yeah, um, perfect. Um, 
It's not that I don't support the Beach Watch program or say council supports the continuation. It's just too weak. Um, council objects to the decision of cost sheet. Again, it's just too weak. I want to actually come out a lot harder and it, like a, a lot force, more forceful in the wording that we use. And I understand council staff have to really walk a certain line, but I look for some suggestions. I mean, just to say council objects is not strong enough for me. So what position? Mm. Okay, well, that we, we strenuously object, that we refuse to sign up as a partner. You know, as a partner, no. to, we refuse to sign up to start paying a cost of up to 109, or almost, say, $200,000 a year to test the water that's probably polluted, by the, but, not, but not by the stormwater, but by the sewage uh, outflows. So they are state government responsibility. They are not local government responsibility. I know our stormwater is, but I just want to... Um, condemn the government. That's what I want. <laughs> Yeah, can council condemn the government? The decision, yes. <laughs> okay, councillors, if we can just stay on on track for the moment. Okay, I don't, can through you, Madam Mayor, to the to the CEO, can we strengthen, particularly strengthen Part B? to, I don't know, strenuously, strenuously object is enough. I'd rather condemn them for that. This is absolutely abhorrent. Oh. Yep, fine. I, um, I'm sure that councillors... Is, does anyone have an objection to the word strenuously? Oh, Great. All right. Damn. I'd like further, but anyway. Um, <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to yes, add? Yes, I'd just like to know... Um, I'd need to, there's a few questions I'd, I'd like to ask through you, Madam Mayor, to the CEO or to the appropriate staff member. In one of the executive summaries, it points out that the, um, if, if we want to have any of our collect, any collections done, we have to sign up as a partner. Is that correct? Through you, Mayor Hines, yes, that's correct. Yeah. Okay, and I did read that there is the ability to just have like a set, a limited amount of testing done? If that be the case, what would the cost then be? Through you, Mayor Hines, the amount of testing that's required really depends on the beach watch parameters so that it can feed into their model. So council doesn't really have a lot of latitude in terms of how much sampling it does. It needs to be valid for beach watch to be able to use for their program. Wow. <laughs> that's so... We don't even get to choose when we get the water tested. We've just got to pay for it. It's not a partnership, that's for sure. Um, well, then I don't even know if we should be signing up to this. I've really got my... OK, concerns. so um, uh, is there someone else who would like to put their name to this? Uh, Councillor um, Causey and Councillor Bingham. Uh, only because it feels or it appears from what I'm hearing, Councillor Page, is that you're withdrawing your support for this. Now, can I have a point of clarification, Madam mm. Mayor? The recommendation is that we do not sign up to this program, correct? Oh, okay, good. Uh, Thank you. And a clarification that um, Councillor Page can move it but vote for or against it if she wishes. Okay, so we're staying with Councillor Page. Councillor Ryburn, are you happy to second it? Happy to, thank you. Okay, um, what's the addition, Councillor DeLuca? And it'll be Councillor Three. Page and Ryburn to say okay. That, so we've already got that council, so rights to the Minister for Climate, Energy, the Environment and Water. The Shadow Minister for that portfolio. 
as well as all leaders of the crossbench in the Legislative Council. Conveying Council's concerns as to the decision to shift the cost of the Beach, Wa Beach Watch program to Sydney Councils. And that this matter also be referred to the state and federal parliamentary inquiries examining what was the uh, your mail minute, Sue? What's the name of that committee? The oh, there were two inquiries. Okay, Jose's got it. Yep. yep. So whatever those inquiries are, if they could please be put in. Is that acceptable to the mover in the second hour? Is that okay? Sure. Thank you. Okay, any other questions of staff? Councillor Causey. Oh, hang on. Yes, it was accepted. The addition was accepted by the mover and the seconder. So, Councillor Causey, you were, you were up. Put the microphone on. Yep. Um, I have to staff. I'm just wondering, can council use our historical data to give warnings about water condition? Um, to residents and particularly to um, visitors, and I'm thinking in particular after rain, are we able to erect signs along the beaches? I know we do in some locations. I don't think we've got them everywhere. But, but anyway, we, would you be comfortable relying on that historical data um, to maintain those signs? <laughs> visitors won't necessarily know that. Okay. Um, through to the staff, please. I'm not even sure if signage is part of the new Beach Watch program, but... Through you, Madam Mayor. Yes, we can use uh, existing historical data and yeah. uh, our understanding of uh, uh, existing circumstances like, for example, when we open lagoons and other operational things that we do mm. that may lead to different water conditions. Thanks. Okay, if no one has anything else to add, can we put this to the vote? Oh, Councillor Causey, you already said something or you asked a question? I asked a question. Okay. Um, so I'd just like to speak to this um, because... Oh, God, where I lost it. Uh, yes. Um, because as the councillor representative on the Sydney Coastal Councils Group, um, I'd like to mention the work that, it's, that it has already carried out on this issue. So since being advised about the government's decision in December, it has obtained legal advice that indicates councils do not have responsibility for water quality below the mean high, high water mark. This information has been provided to councils and the SCCG issued a media release about it which followed coverage before Christmas. The other major issue is that Sydney Water, which is a major polluter, has not been asked to contribute. As a result, the SCCG executive approved letters about the Beach Watch program for the Environment and Water Ministers. Um, I totally support the staff's recommendation about this latest example of cost shifting. Um, However, even though I'm concerned about water quality, we have plenty of past data, as staff just confirmed, um, 
uh, that uh, to warn residents and visitors for now. Secondly, we don't have any spare money to pay nearly $200,000 towards the analysis. So I think we should stand with the SCCG and other coastal councils to send a clear message to the government. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That probably is what actually is in part of the report. So anyone else have anything to say? If not, can we put this to the vote? Kind of getting the vibe that every... Yep, Councillor Page. Oh, sorry, right. <laughs> anyone against the motion? Okay, all those four, raise your hands. Passed unanimously. Next one, item 12.1. It is. Um, Councillor Robins has a question. Uh, no, I just have a comment. Just. Um, yeah, move it. Yes, moving okay. as is. Cou yes. All right, so Councillor Robins moving it, Councillor Ryburn seconding it. Thank you. Okay, um, invite, so questions first to the staff. Councillor Causey, do you have a question? Mm -hmm. Okay, Councillor Causey, questions first. I'm just wondering through you, Madam Mayor, um, how, like, how this will be applied? How do we decide on which sort of areas will be um, subject to a you know, do-it-yourself uh, place plan, whereas we've got other areas like, uh, I think, Manly and Mona Vale, Avalon, where we've got one where the staff have gone through quite a long process. So how do we decide, you know, whether the staff do it or the local community does it? Um, through you, Mayor. Um, the, whilst the title um, talks about local village and neighbourhood place plan framework, it's actually a community toolkit which is used by community members for activation of spaces. So there is a distinction. It's not a place planning exercise because that is an exercise that council um, conducts in consultation with the community. So this toolkit has been designed to assist members of the community running activations and events within their own town centres. Can I then ask a question um, through the CEO of, is it possible then to actually change the word place plan to place making framework? Because it obviously has just caused confusion around the table and it will cause confusion for community members, I'm sure, since it's called two different things. The document itself is titled Draft Commun Community Placemaking Toolkit. Yes. But your, I'm still reading your report, says local village and neighbourhood place plan framework which has no correlation to the words community placemaking tools. That was the title of the notice of motion that was prepared. So for the purpose of reporting back to council, um, we've replicated that title. So then, I'm sorry, I, I just don't want to let it go. Can we then add AKA um, Community Placemaking Toolkit to the title? No. <laughs> no? Okay, all right. I'm just, obviously, um, I'm just very uncomfortable with that. Uh, Councillor Bingham, you had your light on. Well, in actual fact, um, I think it was myself and Sarah who um, originated this back oh. in... And council, I don't, don't, don't know that she was there at that stage. Yes, I think I oh, moved okay. it. That's right, in 2002. And it was intended as a checklist. Uh, sorry, 2022. <laughs> it was, in, it was intention, intended as a checklist. And we've kind of lost that somewhere along the line. Um, maybe, pardon? Sorry, okay. point, of, point of order. Um, in terms of interruptions, I'd like to hear Councillor Bingham finish. Well, I'm just, I'm just, I, I really do, I don't quite know how we came across this name in the motion, but I do agree with um, the Mayor and others. It should actually say toolkit or checklist or something like that because place plan framework is quite misleading and it is not understood by the community as such. 
It's really intended as a checklist or a toolkit to assist them in organising promotions and, and other ideas within their neighbourhood. Through the CEO to um, Louise Kerr. Um, yeah, apologies for the confusion of the title of the council report. Um, the draft document that we're asking council to endorse tonight is called a community placemaking toolkit. So as it will um, be displayed on the website, it will reference those words. Um, on page seven of the document, which is page 245 of the attachments, um, there is a checklist which can be used by the community. And that um, checklist has been used in um, collaboration with members of the community who have participated and planned events over the last 18 months or so. Okay, thank you. Um, is, uh, is it a question, Councillor Gratton? It's just a comment on what's just been discussed okay. in relation to the name, if I could just explain why I said no. Uh, can we just go to questions first and then um, I'll j jump straight to you, promise. Anyone else have any questions? Councillor Ryburn? Thank you, Mayor. And perhaps we're going on the same line of thinking, Councillor Grattan, when we get to our comments. But um, a question through you, Mayor, to the staff. Um, in the original notice of motion, um, point two is around the consideration of um, the Fairlight community um, and mm -hmm. uh, around the uh, community village 2094 um, and their active participation there and explicitly names them to pilot the solution. Um, I'm hoping to gain a comment on the consultation processes with them or how um, it, it now differs to the original NOM. I'm through you, Mayor. Um, staff in preparing the toolkit um, met with the engaged members of that community who had recently um, gone through an exercise of planning an event for the Fairlight area. Um, they participated and contributed to, obviously, the development of the toolkit. They have been... Um, engaged post the preparation of the toolkit but during the discussions with those members of the community it was apparent that they were wanting council to explore a place plan for the Fairlight locality um, that is not um, that would not have been consistent with the delivery program where council has articulated the preparation of three place plans in the current delivery program being Avalon, Bonavala, Manly. And a follow-up question on that um through you, Madam Mayor, could you clarify what the difference is between place plan and placemaking? That's a big question. Great <laughs> question. <laughs> Um, it's, I'll keep this really, really simple. Um, so this is about communities and um, members of the you know community planning events to activate their town centre. So whether it be a business or a community group, like it could be a school group or whatever, um, that it enables them an opportunity to hold events within their teams to activate the space. And that's a really important point because council is not able to deliver events in every town centre across the Northern Beaches. Um, where, how we describe at Northern Beach as the placemaking framework is where we have more direct intervention in either public domain improvements and enhancements, um, ensuring that our communities are more vibrant. So that higher level kind of strategic long-term visions. Um, also, and that's, that's how Manly and Avalon have been prepared. And then you have the other type of place plan like we are um, planning in Mona Vale where you will have interventions in terms of the planning space. So you may look at the land uses that are uh, you know, available in a town centre, building heights and FSRs and things like that to generate more development within a town centre. Um, so that's how they're used across the northern beaches, but every council will deal with it a bit differently. Any other questions? Otherwise, we move to the mover. Councillor Robins. Uh, thank you. Um, I guess it's fair to say that we all appreciate it when we have a successful community-led 
event. And um, I had the experience in October 2022 when a group of Eleanor Heights residents came to me and said that they wanted to run a Christmas market in approximately eight weeks' time, and what did they do? Um, and we probably get this a lot. So thank goodness we had our placemaking coordinators, which I gave a call to. And at that time, because of the notice of motion from the Mandy councillors, there was a draft toolkit or checklist. And so the place coordinator contact or worked with the organising committee and piloted this toolkit. And it was a really good, my term, grassroots um, list where a group of community members could easily, um, in an uncomplicated way, uh, negotiate their way through um, setting up an activation or a placemaking event. Um, and they also really appreciated being empowered by having a say in a tool kit or checklist which other um, community groups could use. And um, it's, like I said, it's uncomplicated and easy. It's on our website and it would be just awesome if we could actually advertise it to more community groups so that these placemaking activations can not just happen but certainly with a process working with our place coordinators make the coordinating councils, compliance and a whole lot of other things together. So um, I think it's a great uh, document and I certainly will be um, sort of like uh, um, handing it out or referring it to other people. And as just an aside, I know that the Fairlight group have contacted the Eleonora residents too with some cross-pollination of ideas. So yeah. that's a fantastic thing too with regarding helping our community. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, I invite the... Seconder, Councillor Ryburn, to say something. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Robins, for acknowledging the foresight that Manly Ward councillors had with this notice of motion working together <laughs> on it. Um, just, uh, just a comment or a reflection on the discussion having um, tonight, notwithstanding I fully support um, this, this uh, motion and I think, uh, and, and thank the staff for their work to date. And I think the three examples um, that we see in the business papers of the Ocean event, the Christmas markets at Eleanor Heights, as well as the Newport Chamber of Commerce, um, all support that this really is helping people who have no clue where to go, um, don't know where to start, and this is a really simplified one stop shop in, in helping uh, community uh, aspirations for activations and events, which is um, a great thing for our community. Uh, but it strikes me that um, that there might be a disconnect between the bigger place plans that we have and then the place making um, and there being a gap, um, uh, notwithstanding that um, there's a, a, a lot of strategic work and um, uh, budgetary considerations when it comes to the Avalon and Manly place plan. So um, I'm looking forward to continuing that discussion but commend this, um, this place making toolkit uh, and I hope that it helps a lot of community groups. Terrific. Inviting other councillors to speak, Councillor Grattan. Thank you. Um, along with I also endorse the Community Place Manning Toolkit. It's obviously been very useful and very glad that, that this work was done. Um, when we first came up with this motion, we were thinking of it slightly differently. It wasn't just about um, events. It was actually giving local neighbourhoods and communities the opportunity to have some input into the future direction of their little place um, and to enable local engaged community groups to you know, apply for grants and things to make sort of small scale improvements. We were never going to be able to have the money to be able to go th um, do a massive place plan on every single one of our villages and it was just about trying to help support local community groups and the Fairlight was the example because they had a group there that were very activated who wanted and still want to have access to some local grants to be able to make some streetscape type improvements to improve the livability of that area. So it wasn't just about events but what we've got is, is about events, it's been very useful, it's fantastic that we've got that. Um, but I did want to keep that place, neighbourhood place plan framework in the title because that was actually the original intention of the motion. So. You know, ha where, wherever we go in the future, I guess we can bring it back at some other stage. But, you know, well done on the toolkit and it's been really helpful. Thank you. I suppose clarification. If the local village and neighbourhood place plan framework actually eventuates, which um, hopefully it does, does it mean that it's now somehow attached to the community place making toolkit? 
or is it totally divorced? Through you, Mr CEO, but looking... I, I'm just anticipating if, if down the track these councillors go, we actually want this place plan framework, is it going to end up having somehow, by mistake, be now tethered with some kind of umbilical, umbilical cord of, of community placemaking toolkit or that'll be a separate item? Um, I would consider it to be a separate item. Um, mm -hmm. The concept that Councillor Grattan um, is referring to is quite broad and there would be lots of different regulatory... Um, oh, it won't be easy, yes. ..matters that yeah. would need to be navigated in terms of the intervention of the community into making permanent changes to streetscapes and things like that. So I understand the sentiment um, and it would be quite different and distinct. Okay, terrific. All right, does anyone else have anything to say or can we move to the vote? Terrific, okay. Almost get the sense again that this may be unanimous. Is anyone against the motion? No? All those in favour, raise your hands. It's unanimous, passed. Thank you very much. Item 13.1, Draft North Narrabeen Reserve Plan of Management. Um, moved by Councillor Causey, no, moved by Councillor Robins and seconded by Councillor Causey. Yep. Oh, sorry, I'm, I had you down. Well, yes, but they're disagreeing now. Yeah, Bianca. You've gone. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to um, make a call here. Councillor Robins definitely had her hand up and Councillor Crevlin can second it. Only because they're both narrow bean ward councillors. Okay, so um, are you both moving the recommendation as is? We've got a nod. Okay, so now I invite questions from the staff. And if you have a question, starting with Councillor Robins, who already has her hand up. Thank you. I just had a couple of questions. Um, just a bit of background to my question is in June 2022, Council adopted the Disability Inclusion Action Plan and there were um, three uh, recommendations to do, talk about written communication in plain English, relevant staff undertake training in writing to meet diverse needs of the audience and to um, build knowledge and capacity of staff to plan for and deliver easy read versions of key council strategies and plans. Um, so when I opened up the hard copy, I was a little bit disappointed to see the size of the font of this um, strategy. Now, I realise that um, online and you'll say um, it's easy to read, but I would assume, and my question through the um, CEO is that hard copies would also be produced through the second community um, consultation stage. And would it be possible for this to please be done in a font that's readable? It's Through the CEO? Oh. Uh, Mayor, yes. Hang on, someone needs to turn a light off. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, we can mm -hmm. ensure that's the case. And also to the other um, uh, recommendation, was an, can an easy read copy be produced with regarding when the when the strategy comes back to council for adoption, as that was written in the um, inclusion action plan, or can be considered through to the CEO? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, we we will um, look into that. Cool. And um, just with regarding the youth strategy, which I think council adopted last year, one of the recommendations was that youth be um, the youth advisory group would be um, consulted with regarding um, strategies um, with regarding consultation community engagement I read in this in the document that 
We put it on socials with Kalov. Can I ask that as per that strategy that in the secondary round of engagement, we've got a new youth advisory group, really enthusiastic. It would be great, particularly as some of the discussion centred around youth activities in the reserve. It would be great to get them on board and um, have that discussion. Please. Through you, Mayor Hines. Yes, Councillor, that's, um, we'll make sure that happens. And sorry, just the very last thing is, um, I actually spoke to the president of the Narrabeen Tigers Rugby Union Club um, this morning, who spoke to me expressing his disappointment that the club wasn't consulted with in the um, uh, stakeholders group. And actually, if you look at the list, they weren't, whether or not they got confused with the Warringah Radettes and the because there's two un rugby union clubs. So could you please contact him in the next couple of days and have that discussion with him? I've got his details, if you don't mind. Through you, Mayor Hines. Yes, of course, Councillor. Okay, Councillor Causey, have you got a question? Yes. Okay. Um, so just in the light of our discussions on the weekend, I'm just wondering, um, is this... Um, included in our current um, budget forward estimates. So is there any funding allocated for it? Thank you, Councillor. That's uh, through you, Mayor Hines. Yes, there is um, uh, Section 712 development contributions put aside over the next 10 years to fund uh, most of the elements in the master plan. Thanks. Okay, Councillor De Luca, I thought I saw your light on at one stage. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Just uh, following on from Councillor Oban's comments as well, we know that club has been broken into several times. Uh, they've previously requested, as you may recall, CCTV and other security. Has that been advanced at all? Uh, through you, Mayor Hines. No, we haven't included CCTV as part of the current infrastructure on site. Considering that a local business offered to sponsor that, could that please be followed up and consideration be given in relation to that? Uh, through you, Mayor Hines, yes, of course. Thank you. Just in relation to the comments earlier by Mr Jacob Hall, in relation to that earlier question that I talked about, concerning social, antisocial behaviour and the answer that was received and it's covered as well, the draft plan of management, etc. What actual proactivity can council undertake with liaison with police and other uh, criminal minimisation um, strategies to reduce the issues that have been raised by so many particularly residents concerned for their safety in that area. Through you, Mayor Hines. Thank you for the question, Councillor. Uh, Council regularly meets with local area command uh, to discuss these very issues. We have a meeting scheduled for next week, um, from my recollection. I'll be sure to raise uh, this matter with uh, the police and the community safety officers to ensure they review the plan of management and master plan and provide us with any advice around um, different things we can do. Uh, the community safety officer was also consulted on the development of this um, and with their feedback's being taken into account. Thank you. Is it OK if we get a response back on what the outcome is of those discussions once you have them? Through you, Mayor Hines. Yes, of course, Councillor. Thank you. And in relation to the request for seating to be away from homes and res residences and residents, uh, is that possible? Uh, through you, Mayor Hines. We'll take that as part of the submission, should this be approved to go um, to submission uh, from this council meeting. And would it be possible in that regard if uh, discussions be held with Mr Hall, who was representing a number of residents? Thank you, Councillor, and through you, Mayor Hines. Yes, we'll be talking, we've been regularly liaising with Mr Hall and we'll continue to do so. Thank you. And just a final one, in relation to the issues that he raised about the need for shared open space, what's Council's position on that? 
Thank you, Council, and through you, Mayor Hines. Uh, Council needs to provide a diverse range of different types of open space um, to be able to cater for the many, many demands that's uh, placed on it, including um, the general continued um, increase in active sport participation. Um, the use of a synthetic is a way of increasing capacity, uh, but it will still be available for use for informal sports and the like uh, when not, in, not allocated or booked by another party. Okay, thank you. Councillor Crevelin, you have some questions. Yep, thank you, Madam Mayor. Just, um, I guess, further on from my fellow Narrabeen Ward Councillor, Councillor Robins, um, I just want to ensure that we do go out there and we talk to those local sports groups and community groups. It's so important that we do that. Um, it's, whilst it's good putting things out on notice and have your say and doing all that, we have to take the initiative to go and go to them. Yep. Through you, Mayor Hines. Yes, the team will be starting to book those meetings in um, should the plan of management, draft plan of management be adopted. Okay, I uh, feel that questions have finished. Does anyone have any um, last minute comments to make? Can I ask if the mover, all right, uh, Councillor. Councillor Causey, um, are, you, uh, are you speaking for or against? Um, a bit of both. Um, You're going to need to make a decision. I'm speaking for. Okay. For. Okay, so I do support this going out on public exhibition. I'm really relieved to hear that there's funding there um, for it to happen because I think it's very worthwhile. I do have one um, reservation, and it is about synthet synthetic turf. Um, whatever improvements to these uh, surfaces we've had in recent years, substituting cork for tyre crumb, filtering water running off the surface, all these sorts of things, there are still major drawbacks. Um, number one, uh, the plastic material can't be recycled, and we create microplastics as a result of it. Um, they have a significant contribution to urban heat in the um, local, in the surrounding area. Um, safety of playing on them when air temperatures rise above about the mid 20s, and at which point um, surf temperatures can be ex in excess of 70 degrees Celsius. Um, there's problems repairing damage, so councils often fence off the field, these playing fields, which then become closed to public use. Um, the surfaces are also very hard to play on and falls can result in really nasty burns. Um, so University of New South Wales research has showed that well laid and maintained natural turf is as good or better um, than the plastic product at a far smaller cost. Um, so I'm hoping residents, both football players and otherwise, will consider these issues uh, when writing submissions. Thanks. OK, thank you. Um, would the mover, Councillor Robins, have a, a final reply? Um, just one thing. is the dates for the consultations. Can the Narrabeen wards have a, a the list of the dates when you're... Thank you. Other than that, I've got nothing else to comment. Thank you. OK, let's put this to the vote. I will ask hesitantly, but I feel it could be unanimous. Is anyone against this? OK, all those in favour, raise your hand. Declare that carried past unanimously. Thank you very much. All right, I'm going to move a procedural motion since we seem to be... Um, going at the speed that we are, that we move into confidential now. Seconded by Councillor um, Regan. All those in favour? Uh, is anyone against? Oh, we've got people asking each other. All right, two. All right, so those in favour is... We're missing a councillor, so Councillor Grattan, Councillor Bingham, you've changed your mind? No, I don't think it's too early. <laughs> All 
All right, those in favour, please raise your hands. It's uh, going to be lost, so Councillor Grattan, myself and Councillor Regan, those against? No, no, you can stay. They've just voted for you to all stay in the room. Yeah, I know. It's tough going. Okay, we're up to notices of motion and knowing that there's seven of them to go through. But then again, we've spent a lot of time on business papers, councillors. So let's see how fast we can go through notices of motion. Item 15.1. I'm happy to hear the comments around the table and then address them to expedite the meeting if that okay. is your desire, Madam Mayor. Do you Mayor. have a seconder? Councillor, oh sorry, Councillor Page was already seconding. All right, so questions um, of staff. Councillor Causey and then Councillor Manano Perez. No, sorry, uh, I was going to move an amendment. So, is that too early? We'll leave that till after questions. Uh, let's get through the questions first, um, and then we'll, when the councillors are all invited to speak, we'll then have a look at your amendment. Okay, does anyone have any questions? Councillor Manano Perez. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, through you, Mr. General Manager, Mr. CEO. Uh, my understanding is that uh, the feedback or the community consultation period is now finished for the State um, Plan Department of Planning. So planning is now thinking about it, but we still don't really know what the second stage or the second proposals are going to be, do we? Uh, through the CEO. Um, through you, Mayor. Um, that is correct. The public exhibition of the low-rise and mid-rise housing has closed. That closed in the end of February. Um, we understand officers of the Department of Planning are considering the submissions and we're yet to hear on any um, further work or um, outcome of those exhibitions. Right. And, and do we have, have as planning be gentle, been gentle enough to give you a time frame or not really? Um, nothing's been firm. We do understand that they'd like to settle this by the middle of the year. Okay, thank you. That's all questions. Okay, Councillor Regan. Uh, yep, so similar. So that submissions it's mid year is what you've heard. So submissions have closed, first and foremost. Council adopted their position and forwarded that, did they, at the last meeting? Uh, point three of this motion says. Advertise, etc. Councils on these litter email database contact areas. Have we sent our submission, or is there any reason why we haven't sent our submission out to all those those groups anyway? As per our original motion, way back when this became a thing in December, I think it was. We, I'm pretty sure I read the mayor's message, and I think I saw something come out with this proposal, and it said all that. Did it not? It advertised all this. Um, we haven't proactively advertised that so the council submission is on the website because it formed an attachment to the council business paper. So it is publicly available. But prior, in, when, we first, when this first came up and we asked that you do a submission or staff do a submission, we notified the community through a mayor's message that this was happening and it was quite strongly worded, was it not? That's correct. There was a communication that went out late December. Great. And so hypothetically, there's no reason why we couldn't just send our submission out to that um, same through that same thing again, or does it need a motion? Through you, Mayor. Um, my understanding is that the Mayor's message post the decision in February did make reference to the decision that Council had made in relation to the submission. Okay, and then I refer to one of the other notices of motions tonight and the CEO's comment or report. It says, in accordance with Council's Code of Meeting Practice, Clause 4.15a. I offer the following re report uh, on this matter to assist council in the deliberation of this motion and then it goes on to say this motion can be um, actioned within existing resources and budget. Given this got raised tonight about another motion with Councillor Glanville on the harm um, amendment and they're doing the 
and I think David Kerr, um, director, said something along the lines was 200 hours of officer time to host a meeting. Surely, with what's on all these things, there's a lot of time and resources of council staff potentially, more so than the 200 meetings, and to set all that up. Is the CEO confident this can be done within existing resources and budget? That was your written response. Um, through you, Mayor, um, yes, that is correct, that this can be done through existing um, operational budgets. Okay. Okay, uh, any other questions of staff? I'm seeing hands up, but I, um, you're a seconder, Councillor Page, so you get an opportunity. Oh, okay, um, as a question only. <laughs> oh, they're answering your question now. <laughs> um, I just wanted to actually make sure the question was allowed. Um, Madam Mayor, through you, I would like to ask the question of um, the state member for Wakehurst, if he has made any representation regarding um, these cha the proposed it's changes. And uh, that's my first question to him. Yes. Okay. Um, any other questions or can I move on to the next questioner? Oh, follow-up question. A follow-up question. Um, are you able to provide us with that submission? Uh, yes, Councillor Page and Councillor DeLuca. Yeah. Thank you. Is it a question? Yes. Um, we still have a question down the end there. For me? Yes, Councillor well, Manano Perez. Uh, I'm just trying to move around the yep. table. <laughs> Um, yeah, but I will uh, come back to Councillor DeLuca and Councillor Bingham as well. Yes. I note the answer that it could be provided within budget, but a question I've got is um, we've kind of asked for the LEP to be the priority for the planning department, for our planning department. Is this going to take staff time? Does that have an impact on the LEP? on the work that you need to do on the LEP, I suppose that's the question. question. Through you, Mayor. Um, yes, this would require staff's time um, and those staff are currently also um, looking at our comprehensive LEP. Thank you. And also, um, in my experience, uh, and again a question through, the, through you, Mr CEO, when state government departments uh, implement these major changes, um, which in this particular case, I understand they do not require legislation, but they usually run their own information programs. Is that correct? It depends on the nature of the, um, I suppose, the policy change. My understanding is that there haven't been any department run programs or information sessions in relation to these current reforms. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to Councillor Bingham if you have a question and then Councillor DeLuca. I do. So I'm wondering if the mover and seconder, given uh, the current information that we have, would update their motion to reflect that. I do feel that we should run these workshops and that um, it's very important because the community really doesn't understand what's going on. There's a lot of rumour and so on. But perhaps um, it's a little bit too early at this stage and I'm wondering if they will consider uh, updating the motion um, along those lines. Sorry, what do you mean by updating it? Well, um, once, once, we, once, we, once we find out what the, what the um, state government has in mind, for example. I mean, it's too late to do anything about it. The, the submissions have already been made. The, um, and they've closed, so there's no point them writing to, writing to the Premier and the Minister and so on about their comments. Um, updating it. Sorry. Thanks for the question, because that gives me the opportunity to just dismiss that issue. The Premier and the Minister are not conducting the actual uh, consultation the department has, and it's essential that the community writes, and that is the possibility, uh, to write to the Premier and the Minister. It is the final decision of the Premier and the Minister. I should point out that 
just because the department has closed its consultation off, that it is essential that people do write to the Premier and the Minister, who are the ultimate decision makers in this. Secondly, um, Clause 5 of the motion seeks to uh, also advocate for a parliamentary inquiry, as well as get the support of all crossbench leaders. And that's because the government, regardless um, of any time frames, which it has not enunciated, can regulate at any time. And that, as I've said in this chamber before, is my major concern, that overnight a snap decision can be made by the Premier and the Minister to introduce these changes via regulation. It doesn't need to go to the Parliament. The only thing that then can happen, and this is why we need to write to all these people, is the Upper House is the only House with the power to move a disallowance motion of a regulation. Okay, Councillor De Luca, you have questions? And then after that, you can move into speaking as the mover. Thank you. Seeing we do have the Honourable Member for Wakehurst here, I would like to know whether he has written to the Premier and the uh, Minister for Planning, as well as leaders in the Legislative Council, calling and supporting for a Legislative Council inquiry into this matter. I've not been requested to do a legislative inquiry. It's the first time I've read about it, but that's not a bad suggestion, point five. But I have met with the Premier and the Planning Minister so and written to you them. you are willing to write to them to support that and you will support that in I the House? I think I just said level, I'd support level uh, point five. Thank you. So now in speaking to the motion, in relation to why this motion was prompted... Residents, as Councillor Bingham has said, are confused on exactly what is proposed and what could be uh, inflicted upon the Northern Beaches. It is not too late to educate our community on what is proposed, nor is it too late for our community to write to the decision makers mm. and those with influence in the, power, in the Parliament to try and stop this. What we have seen already are comments by the government that the Northern Beaches has allegedly not taken its share of development over many years. But at the same time, we've seen a cut in infrastructure. I acknowledge the contribution of Councillor Manano Perez. However, this is within budget. It is essential because this dictates our planning's future. And it is very concerning to our community as a whole. It can be done efficiently and effectively, and that's why I consulted the CEO and Director of Planning on this motion before I put it. In relation to the submissions already put, again, we need to ensure that they go and as many people convince the Premier, the Minister for Planning, as well as the crossbench that we want action. And a Legislative Council inquiry, I believe, will give some protection to all councils who, I think there's not one council that isn't objecting to this, mm. except those that are exempt because of party favourites. I do think it's imperative that a Legislative Council inquiry be held into this, and this is what we are calling for. So the motion goes to what our community is asking of us, it is in within our jurisdiction, it is in within budget, and it seeks to stop a decision, hopefully, by way of pressure, community pressure, and upper house intervention on something that could serve to completely destroy the northern beaches, our lifestyle, our environment, and our amenity. So I would ask councillors to vote for this because it does educate our community and hopefully give them an opportunity to be properly heard by the decision makers that will be making the decisions on this matter. I have a question. Um, of staff. Okay. Just on a technicality. No, I'm actually because um, Councillor De Luca went from um, questions to staff 
uh, as to then speaking as the mover. So um, I was going to invite Karina Page to yep. speak as a seconder, but yeah, question is... It might just inform debate later, but that's okay. I'm yeah, Page we're, we're, we're going to get to debate, um, but as a seconder, Councillor Page... What have I done incorrectly, Councillor DeLuca? <laughs> As you know, at the beginning of the motion, I elected not to speak yep. and said I would address matters in my right of reply because that was to expedite as per your wishes. Yes. So I thought I was doing the right thing by you and so that was my right of reply. Uh, if you no, want me to I, withdraw that as a right of reply. <laughs> I took that more as um, speaking as the mover. No, that's what I said at the beginning. Yep. But what do you want? I think you spoke yep. as the mover mm. and then yep. you asked... So I get a second time. <laughs> it's just that the second it hasn't even had a chance to say anything and I'm trying to be fair. Thank you so much, Councillor DeLuca. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Councillor okay. Page. Um, it, it, other, otherwise, you um, leave your right question, so as a sort of seconder, but that's okay. You can move into debate. Okay. Questions, Councillor Regan? Yeah, just a simple one. Um, in regards to this is a state environment plan, planning policy which seeks to override um, the council's local environment plan, I, I don't... Is it... I don't know that the Legislative Council can get involved. I mean, they, they can hold a public inquiry, but I do not believe they could potentially stop um, the Department of Planning the Minister from just enabling a SEP. I, and I don't know the technicalities. I don't pretend to know, hence why I'm asking the question, which might make point five irrelevant, except I want to support it because I do want to, an inquiry into it to prevent... So I'm just asking that technicality, and I know we've got two senior planners here. I thought the government could just do it without the intervention of a... Of the LC. Okay, so I know Councillor Causey is dying to say something about the inquiry that I think is currently underway. Okay, so Sorry. Councillor Causey. Uh, look, I, I would really like to be able to put my amendment because I think it's going to short circuit some of this discussion, and that is because there is already an upper house inquiry on this issue. It is one of the terms of reference of the Transport Oriented Development Program inquiry. So, and we actually voted at the last council meeting to send our submission to that inquiry. So I think mm. my amendment is that we remove point five because it's I'd, redundant. I'd just like to answer that. I did actually consult Ms Kerr on that. There are only, I think, two terms of reference in relation to that committee that would actually address this. And I don't know why a Greens member would not want a full parliamentary inquiry into something so serious. There's only two terms of reference no, for not. this and there's several other terms of reference for other matters. So this is not the major issue of that Legislative Council committee. Okay. And that's why I want to keep the same. Yes, I have, right, of course. So I consulted no, as well. Sorry, councillors. Just um, I'm gathering there's a difference of opinion. Um, but... We also need to hear out each person and, and try not to speak over the top of each other. That would be um, much appreciated. Yep. So, because there's a difference of opinion here and Councillor Ryburn has quite asked, um, rightly asked for a clarification through to um, Ms Kerr. Um, through you, Mayor, um, councillors are correct. Council did resolve for the council submission um, to be presented to the parliamentary inquiry. Um, it's broad in its terms. Um, it is titled Transit Orientated Development, which is the planning um, framework that doesn't apply to the Northern Beaches Council, thankfully. Um, there are two items from memory um, where it talks about other planning reforms and proposals. And on that basis, we believe that the scope is wide enough to have captured um, the low-rise, mid-rise housing, and on that basis, that's why we um, have made the submission to that inquiry. Crystal clear? So, 
Silence is the deadly reply. I'd just like to put my amendment up to remove point five. Okay, you need a seconder. Um. Okay, <laughs> it's just... Oh, just a follow-up question. Oh, but you're not seconding it. No. Okay. Yes. Okay, so um, the amendment has lapsed due to um, the want of a seconder. All right, councillors. Is there a question? A question from Councillor Ryburn. Thank you, Madam Mayor. In follow-up to that question, Ms Kerr, um, can you clarify what point five, uh, with point five, what would we be doing differently or in addition to what we've already done? Um, it, it, it would be very specific in what council were asking the leaders of the party to do because you'd be proactively requesting them to take action to establish an inquiry into the government's proposals, that being the low rise, medium um, rise, and also writing to the local state members, asking them to make representations otherwise, and that is different to what was resolved at the February council meeting. Okay, Councillor Regan, and then I'd like to actually say something as well. You go for it. I'll, I'll wait. I've spoken enough. Uh, I'm actually going to speak against this, um, and I might be the only person to, but no. I'll put forward my thoughts. I'm speaking against this as well. Okay, all right. Um, only because... I feel that at the moment there is just so much confusion within our community as to what's actually going on. And um, we had to ask to write submissions, we had to ask our community to write submissions, um, which we got an extension for. I know from speaking to Karingai Council Mayor that uh, because I got a letter from him noting three items um, from their community consultation to do with low medium density housing um, that I spoke to him and of course Karingai's in a very different category than us. They've got five train stations, the transport hubs are apparently what the State Planning Department is looking at first. Luckily, we don't have train stations, so I think that probably keeps us in the clear. However, there's even discussion on what is a town and, and what, what the definition is. So we're still trying to discover at the moment whether a town is a supermarket with three and a half square, three and a half thousand square metres um, or more, which we're taking a stand on, but we haven't been told yet. And I just feel like going out to the community and having information sessions on things that we have no clarity on at the moment is going to add to that confusion until we actually hear back as to what the definitions are. And then we can go out to the community with real information to show what actually would happen, not what could happen. Um, I really would like council to present facts, not possibilities, because I think that just adds even more to a very confused community who quite rightly don't have the time to sit there and read the planning documents. And we need to be very clear, I believe, when we go out. I almost would be keen to ask Councillor De Luca, if he might consider deferring this until we actually have that information and decisions made by state planning. Um, I have no qualm with making sure that like every other council out there, we've already told them in obviously very strong language, which was requested by Councillor Page, and we've written our submission why we're against so much of it, but it would be nice to actually have that clear communication to be able to give to our community instead of what could be, um, which I find quite challenging to, um, to support. 
Thank you. Okay, so Councillor Regan, oh, I'm sure everyone's going to speak for or against. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Look, um, I, I agree entirely with what you just said. This is the kind of motion that I would support in principle, but I think the timing is just not correct. Uh, we're going to conduct public education meetings on the current proposals. Well, reality is there's no current proposals. At the moment, there's confusion. Um, I know and I'm aware, or Councillor De Luca is absolutely right, this is an executive decision by the Minister, which means it doesn't need to go to the Upper House, doesn't need to go to Parliament and so on. And like Councillor Regan said, it's actually a SEP on top of the current LEP, of which we've got four. Uh, so I do support the motion as far as organising community educations, but I would suggest, like you said, Madam Mayor, that we should wait until we've got some proposals. I don't think anyone around this table that they've been involved with planning any time in, in, in the past uh, thinks that what they said they were going to do will be what they're actually going to propose. There was a lot of opposition. I don't think there was one single council that, that actually agreed to the proposals. Also, like you said, Madam Mayor, there's been a lot of confusion about what's a village, train stations, bus stations, and so on. Mm -hmm. I think what the government or the Department of Planning will come up with will be completely different from what we've seen in the past. A uh, number of ambit claims were, were made there. I, I don't think it's the same. So I, I, I would vote against this motion. I think, as I said, I, I like the spirit of the motion, but I can't support the timing of the motion. The other thing I would alert you for is our LEP. We currently have four different LEPs that we operate on. We really need to get our LEP going. We need to get it out to public consultation. I think the commitment from staff was that we would have it around June this year. And if we now going to ask them to organize all these public meetings, I don't think we're going to see an LEP out being released by June. And I think that should be our priority. Um, so, look, I like the intention of the motion, but I can't support it under the current <coughs> timing. Thanks, Councillor May. Mayor Hines. I move to um, continue debate, please. Thanks. That's all right. I missed that procedural I, motion. I'd like to speak against... No, no, I'd just like to finish off what Councillor Manana has finished, and I'd like to my turn in line to speak and speak against... Uh, and therefore, I'd like to say that there's been... Okay, so just hold on a moment because Councillor Causey did have her hand up moved or her amendment. light on. Um, Councillor... Um, but she moved an amendment. Paige mm. should speak first because she's the seconder. Okay. All right, Councillor Page, I'm sorry we, we've been going through questions that seems to be coming statements. Go for it, Councillor Page. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think that when we put the submission to, through to state state government, it was it was a very good submission. It was it was in depth. There's a lot of work went into it, and you know I feel that we, we did a very good job. Um, I believe we had so much uh, people that were outspoken against it because we had a very very outspoken local Pitwater MP who spoke everywhere he went about it. Everywhere has never stopped speaking about it by informing people and our resident groups, our local resident groups, have been the ones that have really driven this. And also to say thank you to um, Councillor Causey because she was actually very, very strong with the local residents groups as well. But I just want to remind everybody that we had an incredibly hard time of even getting a notice of urgency up in December. We almost nearly almost didn't get it. Had we done it properly, had we got the real guts of it up in, in December, we would have been able to do what Karingai was able to do. We didn't have that ability because council had not <coughs> voted that way to begin with. It, it really got it through just on the, a very, very weak um, urgency motion. We didn't get what we wanted that night. We had to settle for less. Um, so that's why I, I really want to support this. I want the rest of the community to actually be really informed about what it is, because they don't know. But the fear that I also have regarding um, what, you, what you said, Madam Mayor, regarding let's find out, 
let's wait and see what, what they come back with. What happens if they've actually then used their executive decision and that's that? I think we've got to take every chance and every opportunity to put submissions forward over and over again if we have to. And this, what we're asking for is a meeting in each ward. Pittwater has had um, meetings. They have. Pittwater has had meetings. But no, I don't necessarily want more for Pittwater. I want the, all wards to be have the same level of consultation as what Pittwater got. Um, to tell them, a lot of people do not know what's going on. They do not know what is before them. To be forewarned is forearmed. And that's where I think... I'm going to tell them what, we, well, what we've actually put the submission in. A lot of these people don't know what's going on. Uh, thank you for that. As a seconder, all right. Okay, yeah, no, so, I've, I've actually got quite a few initials here as I'm going. I've been polite to be um, letting others speak, yep. so Councillor I'd like to... Councillor Regan has had his light on and off at least And let others speak, times. including yourself. Can I just I've want to speak also against... I've got Councillor Causey and Councillor Sprott. Thanks. I'd like to move against this, um, speak against Procedural. this motion. No, okay, sorry. procedural motion. I've already sp started speaking. Already started speaking. I've already got the call. Sorry, I had the call and I've started speaking. You can't move a procedural motion while someone's talking. Did he have the call? <laughs> okay, I'll make a decision. Councillor Regan started and then we go straight to procedural motion. Thank you. Councillors. I will move and an amendment. Apologies, Councillor Causey. I know, I know. All right. I, I will speak against and move an amendment and basically say that I like to, like Councillor Jesse Manana Perez spoke, in spirit I support this. Um, I, I do understand there is some confusion out there and that's understandable when you see certain MPs putting out there that the sky is going to fall in and there's big skyscrapers next to a beach, multiple ones of them, and they're saying, oh, this is my God, the world's going to end which does create confusion, which is a shame, because when you have other MPs out there having conversations and doing the right... Point of order. ...reporting it. Point of order. That's a surprise. Councillor De Luca, point of order. Thank you. Councillor Reagan is making adverse inferences as to a public official, which is out of order in accordance with the code of meeting practice. And secondly, it's attacking a member of parliament, which is unparliamentary in accordance with the actual state parliamentary it's standing be orders point as of order well. In the history of council. And well done. he continues to talk over me in an attempt to bully me, and that's unacceptable in the chamber. Bully. It's not the point of order, it's right. Mm. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Regan, if you could finish your statement in a respectful way. Absolutely. And I applaud points five, and I still have no clarification yet on whether or not Legislative Council can actually prevent a SEP from coming into effect. However, I still support the intent of um, five. I think it is important that we do um, a, a version of three, which would be sending everybody our submission that we endorsed last month. I just want to remind councillors we had some extraordinary, valuable workshops together on the planning and, in, and particularly the LEP and the housing strategy. We talked about things like what we need to bring together, such as dual occupancies, which is something that this... Um, there's something with this current legislation seeks to do, or the current step seeks to do, but not the way we want it done in terms of what we spoke of, without giving away anything that we spoke about at that, but it was very clear that it could be done effectively and done, and which is what a lot of our community actually want if you talk to them and you speak to them at length and you take away the fear that's being perpetrated out there, you can actually have some sensible conversations and we can get to that affordability and what we're looking at and increasing supply without doing it over and above. 
we had some very positive meetings with the um, planning minister. We've had other uh, meetings with the premier and, and the like, and we've made submissions. Uh, I, I reflect on the questions in parliament that uh, the MP for Manly in particular has asked and the private member statement I think he did, I've done, and others. Uh, we've all spoken about it. This has a potential to be something quite positive if we look at it in terms of what we did with Ingleside. If we work with the Department of Planning and we work with the local resident groups, we got a great win around that and I think that's what we're trying to seek to do here. So I, I just want to remind councillors that one thing that the Director of Planning said and that was this would slow down the development of the LEP. Yeah. The one thing that will protect us from this SEP is our one LEP. That was made very clear to myself, the CEO and to anyone, that the staff, we need that LEP in and we need it in sooner rather than later. We cannot delay it and that's why I cannot support this. I would support deferring this until post the LEP being done or a decision being made on this and I would support as part of that deferral of the rest of the motion changing point four to be the oh, sorry changing point three to point one and becoming that we advertise our um, submission to all of our community and move and, and keep point five. Okay thank you. So oh, procedural, motion, procedural council, motion council yep, Councillor Spot. Yep procedural motion that we put the motion. But I've moved the amendment. You just spoke. You just spoke against the motion. And the, uh, sorry, Councillor Spry, I moved an amendment and at the end of my speech. I thought the bell went. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Try and bully boy. <laughs> Councillor um, Regan, you've put up an amendment. Okay, so um, the ruling the ruling is that um, the amendment um, is up with Councillor Regan um, that the motion be put um, hadn't been on the floor yet, so therefore Councillor Regan's um, motion or amendment. Um, um, is upheld. Could I just raise a point of order? Councillor Sprott clearly indicated, even before Councillor Regan spoke, that he wished to move a procedural motion that the motion be put. You then gave the call to Councillor Regan to speak. Therefore, it should have reverted back immediately upon him concluding that the procedural motion be put. <laughs> but if you're moving the amendment Which during your speech, surely that's okay. Okay. Well, okay. Um, that's okay. That's fine. All right. Happy Umpire's be... rules here. Umpire says Let's go to the that TV. Stuart Sprott... <laughs> Our CEO's going to go home and have a good sleep tonight. 
Um, uh, our councillor Sprott um, did get the words out straight oh, after um, Councillor Regan. So <laughs> there you go. You've got um, the motion be put because we're going to go round and round in circles and we need to keep moving on. So now the motion is going to be put. No, it's just, we're going to no. vote whether the motion gets put or not. All right. Those in favour? All those in favour stand up. Putting the motion. The, the motion be put. <laughs> All right, Councillor Bingham, Councillor Gencher, Councillor DeLuca, Councillor um, Sprott, <laughs> Councillor Crevlin, and Councillor Walton. Those against? Oh, Councillor Grattan, Councillor Causey, Councillor Page, myself, Councillor Ryburn, Councillor Robins, Councillor Manano Perez, Councillor Regan. Declare that something put the, lost. Put the amendment. I won't speak. <laughs> this is just voting on whether we're voting on it. So now you've got your amendment. Go. So, Councillor Causey. Councillor Corsi, now I put the amendment, but I'll let you speak against or for it or both. But that's the procedure for me. All right. But at least you're going to speak. Okay, well, no. Councillor Corsi, I know you waited so patiently, so please go ahead. Um, okay, so I'm actually going to say something first of all, that I spent a lot of time in January trying to get a public forum up on this issue and basically... We couldn't get a public forum up where the council invited residents because we hadn't had that motion to do so. Well, this was the advice, my advice from staff. So the best we could do was to get community groups in Pitwater because the Pitwater community was crying out for this, was to get community groups to invite staff along to um, forums. They weren't forums, they were round tables and they were very well attended. But to my knowledge, no other ward um, did anything towards organising this. So, as far as I can see, and it, I will go, I'll say more, and that is that a lot of people in Pitwater were very upset that it was basically invitation only, and they felt excluded by um, the way that we held these workshops, or round tables, sorry, I'll stick with that word. So I think that this is actually a timely motion. Um, I would have liked to have put a motion up like this, but we had no meeting in January. So, and I decided not to do it in February because I felt that, as others have said, submissions were closing um, before um, we would have had time to have had a, um, a public meeting. However, people in Pitwater anyway are still asking for a public um, meeting. Even though, even though the advice from the government is very unclear, that's what we need to be able to say to members of the public, that it's not clear what's going on, that we're being asked to define a town centre, that there's so many things that are unclear. But the trouble is that unless we get people writing to the government and complaining, and as Councillor De Luca has suggested, writing to the ministers and all this sort of thing, it will be set in stone and then it will be much harder to change the government's mind on it. So I, I am supporting this motion because I think the community does want to know what the council knows and, and it's in our interests. I mean, number one, oh, sorry, the other thing is that staff have told us at the briefing on this issue that um, if this goes ahead, it will override the LEP. So it is really important that we get this right now. So I will be supporting this motion for those reasons. Thank you. Councillor Regan. So the amendment was um, <laughs> defer points one, two and four. And then if you want to cut and paste staff three and five, I'll just change, also the wording, five can become one if you want. Well, five stays as is and just 
three, I'll just change slightly. And that is uh, advertise our submission through media releases. Uh, Council on the News, database, database, da, 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 da. placing our submission at all community centres and libraries. Full stop. Could and I ask for an inclusion? And I'll probably have to seek the CEO's advice on this because I don't want to conflict you. Um, the Honourable Member for Wakehurst, seeing this will actually probably include you, uh, as the original motion included you as well. In relation to three, Mr CEO, is it in order to extend that, that we also encourage that council... So, as an extension of three, that we encourage residents to write to the people um, so be it the Premier, the Minister for Planning, et cetera, et cetera, who were mentioned in the previous uh, motion that yep. I had. Yep. And that includes the member for Wakehurst. Yep. All local MPs, Premier, Ministers. And crossbench leaders. So whatever's there. Uh, so right to all... So we Sorry. replicate... Um, so, right to all leaders, da 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 da. So, in this instance, not about the legislative um, uh, council request, the meeting, but actually writing with their concerns about the proposal. So, we're just telling them sorry, where they point, can isn't that write point five? to. Sorry? Isn't that your point five? The local MPs and state governments propose. Oh, That's sorry, it say, calling for a legislative council point. inquiry. Yep, yeah. yeah. it's fine. <laughs> Could the member to my right please keep quiet? <laughs> yep. Councillors, I'm, I'm going to say one thing on this because um, I know we all want to move on. Uh, I just say I urge you to support this simply because I think it's uh, a positive step forward. We, can, we, we have to keep our staff absolutely on track to get our LEP in and have a special meeting of council to get that LEP endorsed and to the state government now. We can't let up on that. It is your number one defence against um, defeating this crazy SEP that's proposed by the state government. Thanks. Okay, Councillor Regan, do you have a seconder? Councillor Manano Perez. Okay, um, Councillor De Luca. Thank you, Madam Mayor. There is concern that some have accused others of confusion, and yet this council voted on a motion of urgency to express its concerns about the state government's proposals. And I acknowledge that Councillor Regan left that meeting and did not vote on that. At the last council meeting, we voted to oppose the government's proposals. And I acknowledge that Councillor Regan was absent from that meeting, so might not be aware of it. So twice, this council has signalled its position against, against the proposals. The amendment seeks to take away this council's ability to educate its community. Karingai Council held a public meeting for all its residents based on the information provided. I submit and continue to press that this will completely devastate our LEP and is actually of higher priority and yet I have not been presented with any evidence that it will take away from the ability to complete the LEP work. I consulted with the CEO prior to my notice of motion 
and he confirmed that it was in within budget and raised no objection to the original motion. It concerns me greatly that it would appear that a councillor and a member of the government on this council is trying to stop our community and this council from properly knowing the facts about the matter. Contrast that with the efforts of the member for Pitwater, who has been so active in supporting our community in fighting against this very proposal that seeks to destroy our environment, our amenity, and what we want as a community. In relation to Karingai as an example, we know that the government moved expeditiously to remove its planning powers. Do we want that here? This is why we need an urgent education of the community and an attack on the government straight away by our community in what is expected of the government and what we object to. There is no confusion as to our stance because it has been resolved in this chamber twice. Uh, thank you, Councillor De Luca. Councillor Manano Perez. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, I'll be very brief. I just want to reinforce something that Councillor Regan said, but uh, I'll expand on that. I recall the Minister clearly saying, and actually, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it was actually in writing, that councils that would address the housing crisis, in quotes, through their LEP would be exempt from the new changes, whatever they may be. So, for me, it's very important that we get the LEP well underway because they may actually protect us for some of the worst cases of this one. That's point number one. Point number two is <laughs> I support this motion and I did support the intention of the first, sorry, the, the first motion. There's no, <laughs> nobody saying that we don't want the public to know about it or we taking the right away. But I go back to the question. You're going to ask a meeting to tell them what? We have nothing on the table at the moment. We have proposals that are under evaluation. So, I'm sorry, I will support the amendment. I think it makes sense to defer it, put pressure on the government, achieve your objective, and doesn't waste a lot of our staff time that can concentrate on the LEP. Councillor Sprott. Oh, Councillor Ryburn, sorry. Just a procedural motion to put the amendment. <laughs> it's been 2-4-2 two, two against. Two. <laughs> we, we are done. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. Oh, sorry, I've got four. Oh, okay, okay Councillor Sprott. Uh, I've just got a couple of questions. Oh. Um, to, no questions. To, yeah, to <laughs> staff, um, is there any reason why you can't do both, uh, a, like do A, B and C and prepare the, um, the LEP? Um, we can do both. Um, the point I made previously was that the staff who would participate um, in these sessions and also who prepared council submission um, are currently working on the LEP. Okay. Um, second question to um, Councillor Regan. Got it right this time. Um, how long do you want to defer it for? That's a good question. I want the LEP. I, my preference, and I, I can't direct staff and none of us can, but to our LEP is done. As Councilman Anna Perez put it, it's been made crystal clear to us and it was in the press release from the government it's been said on radio a thousand times that <coughs> the LEP is your best protection so I'd rather it personally to once the uh, LEP is in but obviously um, and that's had its own education with the housing strategy and the LEP and what we've all discussed at those weekend sessions so that would be my preference. The other alternative is you could wait, as Councillor Hines, Mayor, said, which was to wait until the decision is made, because then it's got to go through an implementation process and that's going to cause a whole lot of outcry should it go through as is, unamended. Yep. Yep. 
because it won't just be this council, it'll be going ballistic. Can I just add too, there's a minister might have just texted me and said that uh, no, the LC cannot stop it, it's likely done through a SEP which is not a disallowable instrument. Yep. And lots of councils are making sensible suggestions about application of planning reforms to their area. So I come back to that comment before which Councillor Manana Perez made. The LEP is our best weapon and defence and we need to educate our community on that and to take an interest in it because we all had some really, really cracking ideas at that planning session when we all spoke about affordable housing. We spoke about dual occupancy. Come on. This is what that step's all about. Uh, okay. Um, Councillor Regan, thank you for that. Councillor Page. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Through you to... Um to staff, um, is it is that your recollection of what Councillor Manara Perez was saying that uh, the LEP will save us? Is that your reading of, of this new proposal? Um, I don't believe that I've read a letter which indicated that the LEP would enable a protection mechanism, um, but I do appreciate the sentiment um, that having well thought through planning documents, um, which is the point that we have made in our submission to the government, um, may assist in discussions with the department um, going forward. It won't save us. No, it can't. It was offered okay, as an example. Councillor De Luca, no, we've had a question, we've had an answer. Councillor De Luca. Thank you, Madam Mayor. My questions to the CEO. Noting that some other councils have canvassed the issue of injunctive relief should the government act overnight and seek to introduce this by regulation, what would councils' ability be in that regard? Could we do similarly? Uh, Madam Mayor, just uh, a, a question of that nature. I, I would just need to consider Council's position in that matter before I answered it. So uh, could I ask that if we... Um, uh, if, if that is a position of Council for us to investigate, we would come back to you very quickly with advice on that. Okay, there's silence. Can we put this amendment to the vote? Wow, silence. Okay, it's a possibility. All right. All those in favour of the amendment, could you please stand? <coughs> For the amendment, Councillor Grattan. Myself, Councillor Robins, Councillor Manano Perez, Councillor um, Regan. All those against, please stand. Feel free to stretch your legs. Councillor Bingham, Councillor Causey, Councillor Gencher, Councillor Page, Councillor Ryburn, Councillor DeLuca, Councillor Sprott, Councillor Crevlin, and Councillor Walton. Declare that lost. Back to the original motion. I move that the motion be put. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no, no unlesses. We have enough on this topic now. Okay, so we're back to the original motion. Just waiting. There we go. All right. All those in favour of um, the original motion, please stand up. Okay, so it's not quite unanimous, but close. Councillor Grattan, Councillor Bingham, Councillor Causey, Councillor Gensher, Councillor Page, Councillor Ryburn, Councillor DeLuca, Councillor Sprott, Councillor Crevlin, Councillor Robins and Councillor Walton. Declare that carried. Yay. Excellent. Okay. No. 
sorry. Yes, but uh, sorry. Okay, you can see the against. Oh, okay. We'll see it later. Well, it's time we move on. I, I, I'm anticipating that you're trying to look so that maybe you can take a photo and I'm kind of going, okay, we're up to 15.2. The urban greening of Northern Beaches, Councillor Sprott. Yeah. And seconded by Councillor De Luca. Look, I'm not going to go into detail about this. We all know how important trees are and, and how beneficial they are to our community in so many ways. Excuse me? She agreed with you. I find that really offensive and rude. Thank you. Um, so we, we know how important this is to our community to the, the, benefic the benefits that you get from tree canopy. Um, I'm moving this and just going to move to vote. Okay, lovely. Um, seconded by Councillor De Luca. Do you have anything? Councillor Regan. Just a question of staff. I won't get out the answer so you can take it on notice, but there was a mayoral minute done some time ago about um, looking to replicate some councils like North Sydney which bundle the power lines up to... Um, Ensure, and it's a program, I think, with Energy Australia or Ausgrid or whoever um, that bundles up um, the, the power lines and the like and it then prevents or allows trees to grow more and not be hacked like they are so desperately. Can I get a, an idea where that's up to? Uh, thank, thank, you, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, yes, we'll provide that advice to you. Okay, um, all right. Uh, I kind of feel we may end up unanimous on this one. Um, anyone against? Everyone for, just raise your hands. Declare that carried. Item 15.3, ticketless parking system. So the mover was Councillor Genscher and the seconder is Councillor Walton. Right. <laughs> questions of the staff? Who's got questions first? Okay, lovely. Thank you. Councillor Regan and Councillor Bingham. Um. What, what what happened? Ticketless parking. Why, why have we ended up here? Why does it take so long for a ticket to end up in someone's letterbox? Do we have any answers about that? And um, is it worth explaining to how we got to this situation where we've you know outraged so many people? Parking ticketless parking system. How did we get to this? Like. State government said we were allowed to do it. Council staff at some point have said we're going to do this. We were alerted a bit later on. But at what point in the process, and can someone explain to me, why does it take two or three weeks? Do others just take one or two days? Or is it always going to take two or three weeks? Because I can understand the frustrations of the people that were speaking earlier and those written to us that, yeah, you okay, and then someone got fined twice. Okay, so there's the question of what happened. All right. <laughs> Through the CEO... <laughs> Through you. Um, so I think there's two parts to that question. The first is um, how did Northern Beaches Council come to um, participate in the print and post program? Um, Council was first alerted to the program through Revenue New South Wales a number of years ago. They were participate, well, asking councillors to participate in a trial. Um, we actively explored participation at that particular point in time, but a decision was made then um, because of COVID that it wasn't the right time for us to embark into the system. Um, councillors may recall um, at a briefing we gave you last year, we were talking about 
um, improvements and innovations that could be applied across the environmental compliance um, program. Um, the print and post um, scenario was one of those options that was flagged. We continued um, in discussions with Revenue New South Wales and um, earlier this year an operational decision was made to onboard um, into the system um, with a lot of other metropolitan councils. Um, councils were notified of that decision early in January, um, with the go-live date being the 4th of March. What we understand... So, the main point of difference between the prior system when a ranger would um, attend a vehicle, would write out the ticket and it would be placed on a windscreen, um, is a, you know, a historic practice. Um, the print and post practice... Uh, the officers um, take the details, move on, details are sent to Revenue New South Wales and within a couple of days or thereabouts, um, they receive either an email or a letter in the post advising them of the, the issuance of the fine. Um, it is understood um, historically that we would receive representations from some members of the public um, where they returned to their car, didn't have the ticket, um, and it wouldn't be until such time as Revenue New South Wales were chasing the payment of the fine that they would then realise that they had a fine that had been issued many weeks in the past. I hope that answers the question. Yep. Do we have op op um, options or are we exploring alternatives that could protect our rangers and streamline the process and allow for both the electronic system to be as efficient and as effective as it could be, but also to put a physical ticket at the time on a windscreen? WHS um, implications were seriously considered as part of the introduction of the scheme. Um, leaving a ticket or some other information on a windscreen as well as participating in the program um, would cause officers to be at the site um, of the offence for a longer period of time. Thanks. Okay, thank you. So, I'm not sure if I imagine this, but Councillor Bingham, did you have your light on for a question? I did and I'm not sure whether it's still relevant. However, um, I assume that the rangers don't have access to the information as to who owns the car. I mean, it would be good if they could perhaps send a text um, straight away or something like that to notify the person that they had a, a fine and then if the fine subsequently came through days later, it wouldn't matter so much. The main reason being that it's, it's the problem... Okay? The problem that then they don't find until days later and it, they could, in actual fact, want to... Um, take a photograph of the position of the car or something else at the time? Um, this, the, the rangers do take photographs, so that forms part of um, the information that is provided back to the constituent um, or the person who has received the fine. There is photographic evidence available. The question was, do the, do, can the, does the ranger have access to who owns the car and could they send a text that the, that the car has been... No, I didn't think so. Thank you. Only the police has got that. OK. I'm only after questions at the moment, and then I'll go back to the mover and the seconder. So, Councillor Manano perez was it a question? Yes, it is. It's a quick okay. one. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, look, <laughs> to you, Mr CEO, uh, and I'll speak on the motion later, but my question is, is there any reason why we cannot revert to the old system tomorrow, immediately? Through the CEO or the CEO. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, we, staff are, are, are currently liaising with Revenue New South Wales um, and uh, conversations as high as the Deputy Secretary about the implications of reversing. Uh, we, we are working um, as quickly as we can to that. Uh, the motion uh, calls for a report which will allow us to provide that advice to Council as early as possible. Thank you. In that case, um, when 
what you think the earliest opportunity will be because you don't really want to be waiting six months. What do you think, when do you think we'll be able to get this report? Uh, thank you, um, Madam Mayor. The, the, um, next, so the, the, the next round of meetings has pretty much closed because we, we're, we run a, a month ahead. Uh, so it would be the, the May or at latest June meeting that we would get that back to you. Okay, so no more questions. We go back to the mover. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, and I, I thank all the councillors for their questions because it just confirms the work and the due diligence that went into the preparing of the notice of motion. I thank the CEO and staff for that assistance. This ticketless parking system, this initiative, while possibly innovative, has rightly sparked a wave, or some may say um, a storm of concern amongst the community. These concerns revolve around potential inconveniences, questions of procedural fairness, and unforeseen financial burdens imposed on the community. The motion calls for a report on the comprehensive review and assessment of the ticketless parking system recently adopted by Council. The purpose of this report is not to hastily allocate funds and resources and commitments to the community, but rather to conduct a thorough analysis before making any commitments ensuring that we fully grasp the gravity of the situation and the decision. Also, the notice of motion reflects our commitment to transparency, fairness, responsibility, and, and the well-being of the community. This is not just about parking fines. It's about ensuring our decisions as a council align with the needs and expectations of those we serve. In your consideration of this notice of motion, acknowledge the feedback from our community and reflect on the observations certainly made by the Minister for Finance regarding the system's current challenges. The aim is to evaluate the feasibility of reversing or modifying this decision and to ensure that any parking enforcement system we employ is efficient, fair, not costing us any more, and most importantly, serves the best interests of the community. Thank you, Madam Walton. Mayor, seconder. Um, so, my concerns in relation to the rollout of this was process. Uh, when we were advised that it was an operational matter, not a governance matter, I didn't agree. Uh, I think I've been proven correct. Um, <clears throat> we've even seen the peak body of the NRMA uh, raising their concerns about this process around the openness, transparency, um, how we couldn't see the, the risks uh, associated, reputational risks uh, with our community over this. Um, I, I don't understand that. Um, so the, the process was not right. Um, this uh, notice of motion will fix that process. Uh, we can then look at um, being a bit more open and transparent. Um, uh, certainly, um, uh, it's good to hear that photographs are taken by the rangers. Um, as part of the process, which would map up, uh, match up to the system of the um, uh, the uh, infringement processes for uh, on our uh, highways and major roads around telephone use, uh, so that there is some evidence of the uh, process that the, the rangers have gone through. Uh, however, there is significant back. Uh, backlash from the community over this, so uh, I think we need to revisit it, uh, look at the risks. Um, <clears throat> if the community is saying we're not being open and transparent, we need to listen uh, in that regard. So um, I, I support this motion. Um, just a comment that was made about um, uh, on the spot looking up uh, registration details of all the residents of New South Wales by our rangers, including their telephone numbers to send them texts, is hor horrifying thought. Um, and uh, I totally don't agree with that. And I know that the residents wouldn't agree with that. Uh, probably the rangers wouldn't agree with that either. Um, so um, anyway, notice the motion is there. Thank you. 
Okay, Councillor De Luca, do you have a question? Oh, I was going to speak, if that's okay. Oh, okay, speak. Thanks, Madam uh, Mayor. I too support Councillor Genscher and uh, Walton's motion for review. I do think it's very important, but I should preface that with we did receive a briefing last year and we did receive a bulletin on the councillor's bulletin. Now, I acknowledge that all councillors uh, are often busy and so perhaps that was missed and perhaps we should have, as an elected body, been more diligent to look at those documents and take into consideration. It does concern me the workplace health and safety issues for rangers. That is a problem we've all seen our rangers abused, some pushed and prodded when tickets have been put. So that is a consideration and that can be considered as part of this report. However, the fact that the State Minister, the Honourable Courtney Hussis, Minister for Finance, has raised concerns about the efficacy of the program, the fact that our community is so concerned, and most importantly, what Councillor Genscher has raised about procedural fairness is a very real issue. I have been wrongly fined in the past and successfully appealed on the basis that I knew exactly what had happened at that time. And I was able to take photographs at that time that showed, well, hang on, no, the signage alleged and the offence alleged didn't occur. However, if it does go to Revenue New South Wales, there is no assurance that that fine will be issued within certain days. And when I was still working with the Attorney General's Department many years ago, that was an issue that was constantly complained about before Revenue New South Wales was even uh, created. And it still does to this day. I know that members of parliament receive representations saying, I've just received this from Revenue New South Wales six weeks later. How am I to defend it? Yes, there's a photo, but I can't even remember being there on that date. So the law and the precedent has always been an expeditious defence must always be considered. And you can't do that if you don't know what you're accused of expeditiously. So that is balancing uh, the issue of on-the-spot fines. So I am erring that we need to review this and I will support this motion and we do have to take into the immense concerns by the community and I think this motion, as indicated, has been properly researched, comprehensive and is a good motion that we should all support. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd just like to put a comment in myself on this um, and just also remind people we have obviously ticketless red light camera that comes through. You get a ticket when you're speeding. Um, so the technology obviously has been around for a long time. What I find interesting was to receive the letter from the Henri Courtney whose, whose suggestion was when I read the letter, was because there is no um, notification that you've just been snapped, that um, the recommendation was for the rangers to get out of their car and leave a note on their windscreen, which to me kind of defeated the purpose of ticketless parking in the first place um, and didn't seem quite right. So... Anyway, I'm, I'm happy to support and see what the report says um, and find out what happens. Uh, Councillor Manano Perez. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, um, I'll speak in favour of the motion uh, and I'll commend uh, Councillor Gensher for bringing it in. Having said that, uh, I also have to say that I do understand why staff made the decision they did. Uh, I'm not criticising staff. I understand that, you know, it's cheaper, uh, probably more efficient to do that. But I don't think the community accepts that, and I certainly don't think for parking fines, I don't think a uh, tickless uh, system is fair. First of all, one correction, we did not have a briefing on this issue. We had a memo in December, but we did not have a briefing. 
So some people actually read the documents. Um, as far as red lights, it's an interesting comment that Mayor Hines just made. There is a big difference between a speeding fine trapped by radar or uh, running a red light trapped by a camera. Completely different issues. A speeding fine, it's done using technology that is checked every 60 days, I think it is, that's validated. You can't really argue about it. The argument, you can have excuses, but you can't really argue about being speeding and being caught doing that. The same with red light cameras. Uh, again, technology protects the innocent on the sense that the camera will only be effective once the red light actually drops and your rear uh, wheels are actually past the white line. So technology is there. It would be very difficult to argue about unfairness. Parking fines are a different kettle of fish. Parking fines are subjective. Is the real wheel across the line? There's a no standing there, but I've got 50 centimeters off the car. It's subjective, right? And the fact that you're not going to know uh, that you got fined achieves two things. First, it's not fair and, and puts you at a disadvantage if you want to contest the fine. But also, most important for me, is that you then eliminate the deterrent factor. One of the reasons people are fined, it's not revenue raising, and I would be very sad if Northern Beaches go down that path. It's not about revenue raising, it's about doing the wrong thing and ensuring that you don't do it again, or encouraging you not to do it again. And that's called the deterrent factor, right? If you don't know that you've been booked, and by the way, OSR is not the issue. They will send the fines in 24 hours. But don't forget, Australia Post doesn't deliver a diver anymore. It's only about three days in my area. So I think it's a system that we need to think about. Uh, I understand why the decision is made, but I think uh, Council Genshin is right. I think we do need to review this and maybe some, come to some kind of compromise. So I support the motion and I encourage you to do the same. Can I dare to ask um, whether the motion um, is ready to be voted on? Oh, okay, all right. So, um, those in favour of the motion, please put your hand up. Anyone against? Declared unanimous. Next one, 15.4. Can we make this one a quick Madam one? Madam Mayor, can I suggest that if there is no opposition to the rest of the notices of motion, that they just be put? Mm -hmm. We have done that under Mayor Regan's mayoralty previously, if you recall that, Mayor Regan? I don't. It must be a late night. Yes. I have a problem with 15.5. I've got a question on 15.4. Can um, I put a suggestion we do 15.4 and then go into confidential? So moved. There's no objection then. Hang on. There's no objection, I take it, to 15. So 15.4 and 15.5, there's questions, but then there's no questions or opposition to the rest of the motions? There might be. One more. So can that be put? No, there's two more. Sorry. Sorry, two more. So can... Can, she the, would, can the Mayor take control? So can, can they just be put? Madam Mayor, can they be put seeing there's no opposition? So you're wanting 15.5 being the next one? No? There was a... I think there's a question on 15.5. Someone indicated there was a question on 15.5. Yep, so therefore the rest of the motions after that, there's no objection and no questions. So I'd like to move a procedural motion that they be put. Okay, 15.6 and 15.8. Yes. Yeah, 15 and 15.4. 15 15.7 15 was withdrawn. 15.8. And no, 15 Councillor Regan questions. has questions for 15.4. And question. Councillor... Causey has questions for 15.5. Oh, it was Councillor Bingham had questions Sorry. on 15.5. We could have dealt with 15.4 by now. And, yes, so there's two questions for 15.5. Does anyone have questions for 15.4? 15.4 is not what's on the business papers, as I understand it anyway, so we can't approve it. 15.4 and 15.8. Yes, 15.4 is um, an amendment. So the procedural motion with Councillor Luca at the moment is putting 15.6 and 15.8. 15 I have questions for 15.8. Okay. 
Councillor Regan has questions for 15. Can we get on with this? Yes. Okay. Seconded by Councillor Ryburn. 15.6. Okay. All those in favour? Everyone except Councillor Regan. Correct. We're at 15.4, aren't we? Okay, I move a procedural motion that we move into um, uh, confidential now. Can I? No, um, all of them will have to wait now until we do confidential, which should be quick, even though we've got a couple of names on there. One of them might be a quick pass anyway. Do we need to also move a motion to extend the period of time for the meeting? That would be nice if people feel inclined, seconded by Councillor Robins. All those in favour? Sorry, we voted for extension? This is e extension first. All right, so we have Councillor Bingham, Councillor Genshaw, Councillor Page, myself, Councillor Ryburn, Councillor DeLuca, Councillor... Councillor Crevlin, Councillor Robins, Councillor Manano Perez and Councillor Walton. Those against? Councillor Causey, Councillor Regan and Councillor Sprott. All right, now we're inviting to go into confidential. All those in favour? Councillor Bingham, Councillor Causey, Councillor Page, myself, sorry, keep keeping your hands up, Councillor DeLuca, Councillor Robins, those against? We're going into confidential anyway, whether, whether you want it or not. Um, end of story. Uh, Councillor Gencher, Councillor Ryburn, Councillor Sprott, Councillor Crevlin, Councillor Regan, Councillor Walton. It's probably going to be lost. So according to this, we've got eight, four and five against. Okay, so it's passed. Excellent. Thank you. Had me worried there for a moment. Okay. Just let me check.
Excellent. We're up to item 15.4. <sighs> okay. Can't even read my own writing there. Uh, I'm gathering it was a manly councillor. What's that? 15.4. Yes, moved, Cafe. moved by me. Yep. And seconded by... Seconded by Councillor Bingham. Make it a manly thing. Okay. I'm happy to go to questions. Questions. Is this the motion? You've changed it. Uh, staff uh, governance has the addition. Could we please get that on the screen? For efficiency, happy to move as printed and bounce to questions. It's been seconded by Councillor Bingham. I'd say, so um, just a quick question to Councillor Bingham. You're accepting these? Um, Councillor Page is going to be the seconder. Okay, questions of staff. So I've got Councillor Regan and Councillor Manano Perez with their lights on. Councillor Regan. Yeah, just by way of explanation, I called it out because I heard there was additions being made and I thought being adopted without actually seeing what they were and having it available for the public was reason enough to have it out for good governance to back up my sometimes mate, Councillor Walton. We like good governance. Um, could you explain what the additions are, please? And why? Explain why. It's a report. No, no, explain why. why what, the, 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 oh, put two additions in, so why? Thank you, Councillor Regan. Um, for clarity, and the additions that I sent around to all councillors um, this afternoon, uh, seeks to explicitly uh, acknowledge uh, all businesses of this service lane and seeks their feedback. This Was this an issue that some they had tables and chairs and now we've taken it away and we weren't informed, basically? Uh, through you, Mayor Hines. Uh, Rollers Cafe, um, when they started operating, put out chairs and tables. It was just pre-COVID. They were informed by staff that they couldn't have chairs and tables and once COVID came in, the chairs and tables, like every other outdoor dining area, remained. Post-COVID, upon receiving complaints from residents, uh, we required them to actually remove the chairs and tables. Thanks. I just thought it was good governance and good to have that all out there in public land. Thanks. OK, thank you. Councillor Manano perez uh, Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Following on from that, through you, Mrs CEO, why were the tables and chairs removed? Was that safety reason? Were they breaking the rules or why? Was the process followed? That's my question. Uh, through you, Mayor Hines. The process when assessing an outdoor dining application, application takes into account public safety as well as the safety of the people who are going to be using the outdoor dining um, areas. Uh, it was deemed that as this was a laneway where there's heavy truck movements and um, not enough space that it was not a safe location. 
Thank you. Okay, Councillor Ryburn. Uh, if I don't speak now and others speak, do I then get a right of reply? Only if, they, only if they say something. If nobody says anything, then mm. you won't get any words in. I'll be quick then. Um, councillors, this is a good nom uh, and it isn't seeking for, to, to uh, clarify against the previously asked questions. This isn't seeking to allow a business to do something that, uh, that, that other businesses aren't afforded to, as in do outdoor dining um, and not go through the correct permit. But um, I've heard uh, arguments that uh, this this business should should never been allowed to be there in the first place, um, and I've also heard that you know well, our staff's already been been down there and done and followed due practice, which is correct. They have followed due process, um, but what this what this report and it really is a report uh, is trying to uh, seek to see what the community when when the community does something and businesses improve an area and we move past a particular point of when it's, when it's a good thing, then we move past it and change occurs, um, then to restrict things as opposed to look at, well, what actually does the community want here? Um, and look at the opportunities that can arise from having a shared lane uh, and consider all the wants of the community, not just what has been in the past. Um, so uh, not, not, um, notwithstanding, I possibly should disclose my... Um, total interest in a chalky croissant, uh, but this the, the essence and intention of this nom is really to, to represent the community and the community outcry that um, this uh, cafe, but also this this whole wider laneway and Rialto Lane, um, is needing of rejuvenation and community change. And I'm trying to get to uh, understanding the opportunities as well as limitations um, of what can be possibly looked at out of the box, but also uh, uh, within the current um, realms and also communicate that to the community, uh, which I don't think has been adequately uh, done so far. So I, I implore you to uh, vote for this uh, motion. Okay, thank you. Councillor Manano Perez, you have a question? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, uh, I've got a couple of issues with this motion, mainly because, I mean, knowing the area, I've been there, uh, I think... Uh, staff was quite correct uh, in, in not allowing outdoor um, pedestrian presence there. It's a very narrow line, so I, I, I'm, I think staff made the right decision. The, the other issue on this particular motion is uh, it's going to cost a fair bit of time and money to do what the motion asks for. I don't haven't asked how much, but I'm sure the CEO can tell us. But uh, why this line? We, we, we do have a manly place plan that we basically sent out, got a lot of feedback on from the chamber and so on. I mean, that should be part of the whole overall thing for manly, not just one specific line at a time. Uh, I, I don't particularly object to the motion, depending on the answer I get as far as costs are concerned, but I'm not sure the policy on the run for one specific line is the way we should go. I think if we're going to look at the Manly lines, I think f fair enough, let, let, let's do that as part of the Manly uh, Peace Plan. Let's look at all the lines, not just this one. Um, uh, look, I know there's a few others where there are outdoor dining, they are lively and they're great. So I, I do have an issue with doing it for this particular business, for this particular line. Uh, that's the problem I've got with it. Uh, I won't vote against it, depending on costs, as I said, uh, but I don't think this is an efficient way to run our business. Uh, costs, Mr. CEO, have any idea of costs, including staff time, please? Uh, the intention was to um, deliver this report within existing staff resources. Uh, Councillor Bingham. Uh, thanks, Madam Mayor. I think it's worthwhile doing the report because it will clarify once and for all that there are a lot of constraints with this lane. Um, it's a major service lane. Um, it services all the, all the businesses on the Corso, 
all the retailers on the Corso, and it also services all the businesses which are upstairs, and there's two or three levels of those. It services the um, businesses on South Stain. Now, I, I, I did ask the question of staff. They weren't able to tell me, but I, I should think there'd be about 60 businesses probably in all. In addition, it services 162 residents who have, from the peninsula, who have their cars parked specifically under this area, and this is the only way out and in. Um, in addition to that, we have Coles who have deliveries, and they can't have their deliveries early in the morning and, and restrict them to those times because of the 162 apartments upstairs. So, um, and, and in addition to that, um, we, we have constantly had to replace the bol The bollards have been put there for pedestrian safety because it is a very busy area and it's a very popular area. But um, Phil Devon will tell you that they are constantly having to replace the bollards and they only provide a very narrow passage for, um, for pedestrians to go ahead. And we've even had the buildings being damaged because trucks have difficulty getting through. So um, I really commend um, Councillor Ryburn because I think we need to find out once and for all what are the constraints and if in fact there are any opportunities. Um, and I am concerned that um, rollers who have been operating since 2018 did not seek permission, they never have had permission, and it is a service lane. And the fact that they put out some outdoor furniture which is in the area that protects the pedestrians um, really isn't the way to go. So I welcome the report and let's see once and for all how realistic it is to do this business. Thank you very much. Councillor Causey, you had your light on? Passed? Okay, Councillor Creflin. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Quick um, question. I find it really interesting that um, who, who actually paid for... I mean, I've been frequenting down in Manly since I was a young girl. Who actually paid for the works down Rialto Lane to be actually... to be completed? I could answer that. Oh. Um, during Man Manly Council days, mm -hmm. um, Chris Athos, who owns a lot of the properties at the back of the mm -hmm. um, premises, yep. um, he paid for the paving of the of of that area. And, so I, and I might add that um, he and the general manager did it without knowledge of the councillors. Right. <laughs> So council had nothing to do with it. Um, we're no, obviously the benefiting. general manager. The general manager did approve it, yeah. and the general manager arranged for him to pay for the works to be done. <laughs> but the councillors had not been informed. Right. Okay. Well, that happened in um, what I will call the olden days. <laughs> My fourteen-year-old son refers to them. Um, uh, look, obviously everybody's benefiting out of it and, you know, now to have council come along and, and start to make things difficult for a business who's actually added some really good stuff to a, an area that was very much in need, I find that really interesting and I, I think that it is time to consider what businesses do for our local community and how we can actually help them progress and continue doing what they do do. They're very loved. Um, people frequent them. Um, it's busy down there. I go down there. My kids go down there. Um, it's it's a busy part of the little part of the Manly area, and I think we need to help these businesses. Let's not make life hard for them. Okay, thank you, Councillor Causey. I've just got one question uh, for staff through you, Madam Mayor. Um, is the uh, cafe in question paying outdoor dining fees? Uh, through you, Mayor Hines, no. Okay. I have a question. Councillor Sprott. Uh, have we asked them to pay outdoor? Have they been approached and, and, and did they say they were happy to do that or...? Okay, uh, through the through CEO. You to Mr Pfeiffer. Sorry, through you, Mayor Hines. Uh, we would 
we have not given them an outdoor dining permit, so we would not ask them for fees, so no. Is there any major therapy? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to so speak all right. for it. Um, Quick. Yep. I just think that, you know... It would be nice, though, if the years, person who moved it actually got to speak first, I suppose, for it, oh, being okay. the mover. Just... Oh, you have spoken? Yeah, yeah it was pretty so. quick. All yeah, right. I'll be even quicker. Right. Um, I just think we've been banging on about our laneways and activating our laneways for the last 10 years. And, and you know, here we are, act, act or a cafe, activating these laneways and the public are enjoying them. And now we're trying to shut it down. So I'm going to support this motion and, and hopefully we can see common sense here. Anyone else? would like to contribute or should we go to a vote? Just oh, a right of reply. reply. Thank you, Mayor. Three quick things. Why this lane? Because the community wants change here and because it is our job to advocate on behalf of the community. So when the community wants something, we bring it to this chamber. Two, policy on the run. Councillors, I remind you, this is not policy on the run. This is merely a report, a report that asks what are the opportunities, but also what are the limitations? Let's unpack it. And if we can unpack what are the opportunities and limitations, what are the things that we need to consider, and what are the costs? Number three, why don't we review all the laneways? That's a great idea. Let's review all of these laneways. But I also don't want to make this bigger than Ben-Hur. Um, but, but through this process, people have been saying, why can't we have laneways like Melbourne? Why can't we have them like City of Sydney? And I'm not saying that every single laneway that we have across our LGA um, can replicate the laneways of Melbourne or the City of Sydney. Um, but by by trying to do that and unpack that within this, um, this norm will make it the cost much greater, a much bigger review, and that's not what I'm seeking to do out of this nom. So it's 11.05 and time to vote for this. Thanks. Okay. Put this motion to the vote. Anyone against? Everyone for? Put your hand up. Declare that unanimous. Thank you. Okay, so our next one is, I think, the one on graffiti, is it perhaps? Graffiti 15.5. Okay, so that's Councillor Genscher. Who's the seconder? Uh, Councillor Sprott is the seconder. I wish you need to share this around. I'll do the sharing. All right. Any questions from the staff? <sighs> Councillor Manano Perez, followed by Councillor Causey and Councillor Me Bingham. again. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, um, I've got a, a, a question, which is also a bit of a suggestion. Uh, I'm going to support this motion, by the way, so I'm comfortable with that. However, I would like to ask the staff if he, it would be possible to achieve what Councillor Genscher is trying to achieve, not under a new task force or a new committee, but under a subcommittee of the current safety committee. Because all the actors, Councillor Gensha has mentioned, we all represented on the safety committee, from the members of parliament to us to the police. So would it be efficient and possible to basically do what Councillor Gensha is asking for under a subcommittee? And, and like you said, Madam, Madam Mayor, there, there is a precedent for that. Would it be possible to do that? Uh, thank you, um, Madam Mayor. We'll, we'll explore those issues in the report that comes back. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Causey, you were next. Okay, and I think there was a third person, but... Oh, Councillor Bingham, thank you. Sorry, I didn't mean to miss you. Um, I'm just wondering if uh, Councillor Gencher would consider that one ward um, undertake a trial rather than involve all five wards and, and 
and uh, the enormous amount of work in, in doing that. So I just put, put that as a thought. And he's thinking. Well, no, I'm not thinking that's the purpose of the report. Potentially the staff will identify the best way, most cost effective, most achievable way of doing this. That may be a recommendation that comes from a report. Okay. Councillor Regan. What's the report going to contain? What sort of options and things? It's a lot of time. Um, through the CEO. Uh, thank you, Mayor. The report is going to um, contain uh, a series of options for Council to consider in relation to establishing that uh, working group or a task force of the like to address um, issues in relation to graffiti and um, the community associated community safety concerns. Why six months? Why six months? Uh, to give staff the time to do a comprehensive report. Uh, if you read the, the notice of motion, the background, uh, there are a number of issues that are not currently being addressed operationally, um, nor through policy that will need to be um, achieved. So the staff have six months. The problem is getting worse, but no homes are burning down. <coughs> Councillor Regan. Uh I, Is I, it another question? Yeah, I, I, I like the idea that was suggested by Councilman Anna Perez about putting it as a subcommittee and getting action happening now, starting a process, but... Is that not a, at all possible? Can it be an action item on the next safety committee agenda for some or all of this to... to... to kick off? It's like a subcommittee. I'm just impatient. All right. We'll take that as an impatient statement and move on to Councillor Causey. Um, so I'm just wondering how we've developed our approach to graffiti at the moment that we're carrying out at the moment. So um, we had a motion, was it last year, for um, lots of um, painting on walls in Mona Vale, for example, to prevent graffiti. Um, how did we arrive at that position that those are the sorts of recommendations we were getting from staff. Through the CEO. Uh, thank you, Mayor. The um, council adopted the community safety plan and it contains a series of actions that uh, seek to address uh, things such as antisocial behaviour and graffiti. And, and as part of that uh, plan, it was to look at ways to mitigate where graffiti was occurring um, in large proportional numbers and a response in relation to providing areas for street art. Street art is not graffiti. Um, that was, an, again, a further program where Council received grant funding to um, provide additional street art facilities in um, these two locations in Mona Vale where we were able to do some artworks and we have a number of other existing locations. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Does the mover have anything they'd like to add? I wrote a statement. I might as well read it. I'll read quickly. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I propose a report on the establishment of a potentially uh, of a dedicated graffiti task force a working group to address the rampant graffiti problem plaguing our community. The situation demands proactive measures and collaborative efforts from various stakeholders to effectively combat this escalating issue. The lack of specific policies currently addressing graffiti within the council underscores the urgent need for this, for a cohesive strategy. I offer the initiative possibly to create a task force comprising representatives from the community. The collaborative approach ensures an holistic perspective that enables us to tailor solutions to the unique requirements of each ward and the broader LGA and all the stakeholders and different property owners. The multifaceted challenges posed by graffiti, including property ownership and responsibilities, aesthetic concerns, property damage, economic impact and community well-being 
cannot be understated. It's not merely a matter of aesthetics. Graffiti constitutes vandalism and a criminal act with far-reaching consequences for our community that must be dealt with. I fully endorse and advocate the concerns uh, as outlined in my notice of motion as they come from the community and they are there to address these challenges comprehensively and efficiently. By implementing preventive measures, fostering community engagement, we can mitigate the impact of graffiti on our community while upholding the values of safety, pride and well-being. Lastly, the suggestion that additional community engagement and strategic development require substantial new resources uh, overlooks the possibility of leveraging the existing resources, which I think Jose is already speaking of, partnerships and community involvement. Engaging with community groups, volunteers, and other stakeholders could provide valuable insights that we're just not seeing and support that, uh, and support that reduces the overall cost uh, to the council and improve, improve the effectiveness of a possible graffiti management strategy. Who knows? Potentially that's what the report will, deal, will, will lead to. I acknowledge the challenges and constraints faced by council. I believe that a comprehensive uh, approach to graffiti management is necessary. We should prioritize the development of a, of a task force, uh, but allow staff the, the comfort and the time to create a comprehensive and efficient document that will actually deliver actions as opposed to words. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Councillor Sprott is the seconder. Oh, sorry. Yep, thank you. Um, yeah, look, uh, this is, I think this is needed, it's important. Uh, we've got to find ways to uh, stop the uh, graffiti. I've moved uh, two motions through this council to um, have uh, the, the uh, graffiti removed at French's Forest there um, and, and that area made safe. Um, you know, writing to the local member for Wakehurst, Michael Regan, um, and he has... Uh, Previously, Brad has... Uh, and, <laughs> excuse me, I'm, I'm speaking. Um, and, and he's What's been unable to do anything for two years now. The graffiti is still there, so we need to look at other options um, on getting and how we can remove this uh, graffiti and stop this from happening because, obviously, the local member for Wakehurst cannot... <laughs> Councillor Sprott, don't lose your sense of humour now. Seriously. Okay, councillors, I know it's late at night. End of the week and is going to be the motion be put. Political point End scoring of the week, going on. Motion be put. I'll mute and bring you down in a moment. Okay, councillor Sprott, please. Oh, sorry. Okay, um, let's move on this motion and put this to the vote. All those in favour? And guess what? It's unanimous after all of that. Hope you're feeling better and we've got one more to go. Okay, 15.8. E-bikes. Move. As printed. Let's put seconded. it to the vote. No, no, I'm going to speak to it. I'm going to move, second it. Okay, oh, that's just Ryburn, hold on a moment. I called it out because you wanted to adopt I it. I know. Councillor Regan? Yeah, look, I just wanted and to... And seconded by... Hey, sorry, he pulled it out. Oh, sorry. Councillor yeah, Walton? Yeah, but I pulled it out, but I speak to it. Councillor Regan, are you moving as... Printed? I, I moved as printed. Okay. Calm down. Remember, right at the beginning, I said that I could make a mistake or two and be patient. And I know you're just dying to all make sure that you have one last score against each other, but let's just keep this nice and even. E-bikes. Gee, we've voted on this a few times. So, Councillor Walton, as the mover... Sorry, I didn't even know that we had Councillor Ryburn as the seconder. Councillor Walton, do you have anything moved, to moved add? Moved as printed. Okay. Councillor Ryburn as the seconder. Yeah, 
Move is printed. Okay, questions. Councillor Regan. No questions, just want to speak briefly to it. Anyone have any questions? Right, then we can move into debate. Councillor Regan. Yeah, I just want to thank Northern Beaches Council and I want to thank Councillor Walton for his advocacy on this. It's been um, very good to be able to use and advocate in Parliament where we've moved uh, both the private member statement and notice of motion. Uh, I think James Griffin, member for Manly, has done similar and what we've been able to achieve is move this forward rapidly and using Northern Beach as a bit of a sort of a place. You, you notice down at so McKellar Girls in particular, um, there's a, and other public schools, but that was one that stood out for James and I when we were visiting was there's hundreds of these e-bikes, but they have a, as Pat Daly pointed out in the audience earlier, they have a a pro, there's a, there's a, there's a good pro to them, but there's also lots of cons, but how we balance that, so the meetings with the Minister, the meetings with the Transport Bureaucracy has progressed this forward thanks to the advocacy of Northern Beaches Council, so thank you to staff for what they've done as well on this, for David for, or Councillor Walton for moving it forward, because you'll see in the very near future um, this will be tackled. The police are very keen to do it, and RMA are very keen to do it, meeting with the police union shortly on this. There's a lot of things happening in Parliament, and again, I want to thank Northern Beaches Council for their advocacy, which was started by Councillor Walton. Is that a happy note to end on? Okay, thank you, Councillor Regan. Councillor De Luca. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Like I uh, raised earlier in the night, uh, in relation to the request for the forum um, concerning the, whatever that motion was, it's too late in the night. Again, we are cost shifting. It sounds like this matter is actually reaching a legislative um, proposal, if I take that to be correct. Is that right, Councillor Regan? So, therefore, I don't think it should be delayed with Northern Beaches Council having to convene a meeting, because I think both it superseded that, and again, why should we be doing and meeting costs of a meeting when it should be state jurisdiction? So my only concern is that that's in there, and yet there's going to be a legislative proposal taking up the numerous concerns of both Northern Beaches residents and everywhere else uh, that the legislation needs to be amended to both give enforcement powers to council and rangers as well as actually introduce a legality in relation to those other devices and the speed limit. As you know, currently, um, the speed limit is only in relation to not pedalling uphill and that's caused great confusion amongst uh, both regulatory um, bodies and even the community. So I'm just not sure, do you want to press with having a meeting when it sounds like legislation is imminent? Uh, yes, I do want to continue. So the, the regulation, we just don't know in the legislation or regulations. I mean, regulations can be done quickly, but we just don't know. What, yeah, and legislation can't, of course. Would it be better if the state members on the Northern Beaches convene that so it's no cost to council? I, I need advice from uh, the, through the CEO. If, if there's any cost, it's just reaching out to these stakeholders, I believe. You know, current uh, traffic resources. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I don't believe so, but if I could just come back to you on that, I... I just don't have that at hand. Okay. Um, any other questions? Otherwise, I have got Councillor Page. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, I, I suppose I should have raised this a bit earlier. With her. I, in fact, I think we did have this conversation at some, some stage, and I wanted to see if it actually could be built into your motion, but... I've, one of my major concerns that I have is, is you've got quite young, young kids riding these bikes. They don't fully understand or know what the road rules are. And at the moment, I don't know if anyone's experienced themselves, but if you could be driving down the street and they come flying across a pedestrian crossing, they don't 
have the right of way on a pedestrian crossing. They don't know. They don't care. They think that it's a pedestrian crossing. I can use it. Is there any way you could build some words into that to actually increase the education of um, the people using these bikes as well? Uh, I, I don't propose to change the notice of motion because police have discretion and um, so they can escalate regulation from education warning upwards and I believe the early operations with council traffic staff was, was centred around um, uh, education. And I might just add that actually I think at the last two safety committee meetings... Um, Superintendent Sharkey had actually talked about schools that they had done education um, programs at. But the reality of it is, I suspect, is that until you legislate that kids probably from the age of nine start understanding road rules from, from school, um, the, or you legislate that they can't be on it under a certain age where they've got road sense. But anyway, that's my commentary. Um, and I shouldn't have any. Uh, Councillor De Luca, I think I had your light on, no? It's done. Okay. So Councillor just, uh, Walton. Just in responding, uh, thanks to uh, the Manly Observer and the Northern Beaches Advocate, um, leading, leading with that education and awareness uh, yep. out there. We, we certainly did see some... Uh, improvements in, in relation, particularly with helmets, um, and and the media had uh, a lot to do with that. So it was good that um, uh, that they were on board and assisted with that. And um, um, so thanks very much. Okay. All right. Anyone and Michael else Regan. Have anything to say? That was your right of reply, so we put this to the vote. Please is the plead. Okay, we ready to vote on this? Is anyone against? There we go. Everyone put your hand up. It looks like it's unanimous. Okay, so before you all storm out the door, we've just got to um, acknowledge what was voted through at Confidential. Uh, which was regarding um, Flying Fox Lease. Uh, conduct Review Panel. And the last one is the Property Steering Committee Minutes. Okay. Thank you very much, councillors. It's 11.29 and I'd like to declare this meeting closed. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs>